Maybe you show people what it's like to be hopeless, to have nothing, to wait in 26 degree weather in the line for a clinic because you're sick to your stomach off your family has written you off you have felony court cases stacked against you and your life is hopeless you have nowhere to go except for a friend's couch in a basement that is a, a very sad and real truth for a lot of people in this country and by the way god bless all the people that make it out of that that place in life because i guarantee you or i bet you at least they have the same empathy that i have for others in that position because without going through that you will never understand what it is like to have no hope, to have no feeling that things are ever going to get better in this life for you and to give up or to almost give up. And God, literally, God bless those people. I would never trade that experience for my life ever. Mike Malak, everybody, also known as Hey Big Mike. How's everybody doing today? All Thanks right. for having me on. Mike, uh, Mike is, is, is uh, <laughs> dedicated in ways that I have even given up on <laughs> trying to talk to the most openly insane people online, never letting go. Uh, make sure you don't show your uh, no, uh, phone. It, uh, yeah, never letting go of the of the uh, cause that he has. He has notes. Oh my god, you got <laughs> notes on your phone. I, I'm embarrassed. Like I'm actually embarrassed. My mom is worried. You know, manager Jeff is worried. My girlfriend is worried. Uh, I'm worried. I keep telling you, like, sometimes it's okay to just, like, let it go, you know? <laughs> Does it scare you at all? Does the situation yeah. worry you at all? Yeah, 100%. Uh, when I was a kid, there was a magazine on the end shelf of the uh, register at the grocery store called the National Enquirer magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bat Boy. The Bat Boy. Like, is the president a gecko? You know, yeah. does... Does uh, Princess Diana drink baby's blood, right? Like, we yeah. have the evidence. And you would just walk past it. And if you ever saw someone reading that magazine, yeah. you would steer clear of that person, right? Yeah. It, it, but also, like, I think it was, like, it's, like, fun. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, like, it's fun to consume this kind of, like, insane content as long as you know what it is. Like, Alex Jones, for example, right? I've, I've always maintained the position that Alex Jones was like a very charismatic figure who was very funny, very telegenic, right? And, but the problem is when people take Alex Jones seriously and start acting out on, on uh, Alex Jones's desires. Sandy Hook was yeah. a false flag. It did not actually happen. These are crisis actors. Yeah. The, and now, now this, was a, this was kind of the introduction for me into it living in Norwalk, Connecticut at the time, 24 minutes from Newtown, okay? And I and the the world mourned, everyone mourned this terrible tragic event together, one of the first, you know, other than Columbine, one of the first big school shooter scenarios in the United States that got everyone's attention, especially because it dealt with such young children. And when when he went on and and basically said that this was some sort of psyop, some sort of government, you know, false flag, that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and I was one of those people. I had people. We we had Alex Jones on the show. We had Alex Jones on Impulsive. Oh, you did? It was a massive moment for us because they, uh, 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 YouTube was actually angry at us for doing that because he had just been deplatformed, and we could have discussion about deplatforming and free speech if we want to do that. But I got calls from people connected to Sandy Hook families, like, "Hey, listen, we've never been in touch with someone who's going to have this guy in the room." If you punch him in the face on the show, we will wire you $100,000. And I didn't have money at the time. That seemed like a pretty good offer to me. And I told him that, and he said, punch me in the face then. Come on, punch me in the face. And it was this wild show. But, it, but it, I think that around that time was when all of that fun, entertaining stuff became mainstream conversation. Now you're, yeah. you're, people's lives are in the balance as a result of these conversations, let's be honest. Yeah, so uh, Alex Jones is, uh, I think, just one of the pioneers of this. Like, he's not the first guy to do this, and he's definitely not. Uh, he's definitely not going to be the last guy that does this. The problem with it is that Alex Jones uh, or Alex Jonesian ways of thought are now so f deeply embedded in mainstream conversation that we as a society have to basically sit there and take it kind of seriously to even address it. And it's like the, I mean, it's, it's totally ridiculous. Right. But I, I have a lot of thoughts on this. This is something I've talked about quite a bit. Like the, 
the idea of like how conspiracy theories manifest and how it becomes like uh, permanently embedded in, in mainstream schools of thought is very damaging. Um, but I think it's, it's basically uh, a, an indication that like our material conditions across the board are worsening, not for, uh, not for, you know, our con material conditions, <laughs> like we are doing fine, but like the broader uh, American population it certainly is well, not well, doing think, all right. Well, I think it, it affects our conditions as we are Americans. I mean, and by the way, and by the way, people of this world, we are worldly citizens to an extent. We yeah. care about, you know, deeply or in some way deeply care about the outcome of this planet. And and when you see this current push to forego the necessity and the prerequisite that was once proof and evidence to support this storytelling, which affects people's lives dramatically, that needs to scare you. That has to and should scare you a little bit. You can go online and you could say anything right now. The, the, the biggest current one is, is, and if you want to pull it up, is that Candace, Candace Owens made a, a claim on a video two days ago, I believe, that the prime minister of France's uh, wife is a man. She is a man, an actual, uh, was born a man, uh, actually fell in love with uh with President uh Macron, Macron? Emmanuel Macron. Uh, and and she was and she's a much older woman, by the yeah. way. She's an older woman. No, no, dude, trust me, we know. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have talked about. Have you ever yeah. talked about this topic? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, I I usually stray uh, very <laughs> steer very clear of Clandis Owens. Uh, <laughs> you know, but um, this is this is a wonderful uh wonderful introduction. I mean, this is like. Clandis Owens very famously also once said Hitler just wanted to make Germany great. I don't know if you knew that or not. But but, but, but there's a huge audience for that statement. Oh yeah. There's a massive audience. And and at the end of the day, like listen, what 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 Candace Owens ends up being, and listen, you can't say Candace Owens is not smart. She's in it, she's in it. <laughs> She's intelligently spoken. She she knows how to to voice what she's trying to say in a, in a in a in a way that obviously works for her, right? But at the end of the day, let's call her what she is. She is a hate farmer. She is a hate yeah, farmer. No, she's a white supremacist. She, I, I don't want to get into specific sides, but her. Just I mean, there's like, no side. It is just like you know. I don't know how. I still don't understand how exactly that's possible. But at the end of the day, she runs a business. Are you familiar with? Um, there are, how do we, how do we, uh, how do we parse through this? How do we broach this subject as two white guys? Um, F fearlessly, fearlessly, like, that's how we me, do it. Cause by the way, that. cause Here. by the way, Hassan, the one thing that all this, this like X say whatever you want type of shit does for us is it allows us to be just as ferocious on the other side. I you mean, can I, say I whatever have the you want I've, I've been doing that i know you have. I, i've been doing that since day one which is why a lot of people <laughs> yell at me but um it's like hey, did you watch boondocks when you're growing up i watched boondocks aaron, saints no not boondocks saints boondocks <laughs> aaron mcgruder's uh uh animated cartoon. adult yeah, animated I, cartoon I, I, i've seen some of it yeah, for sure. there's a character in that called uncle ruckus um in black american history there is a long tradition that has been aptly criticized of the internalized white supremacy that exists among uh, some black people that are either victim to white supremacist ideology and the social conditioning, or those who have that and then make a career out of it. Oh, I mean, here, JLP is another you... guy. Jesse Lee Peterson does this. But here, here, Malcolm X is uh, much better. When black people like me talk to the slaves, they didn't kill him. They sent some old house negro along behind him to undo what he said. You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of negroes. There was that old house negro and the field negro. And the house negro always... This is a matter of historical record. Obviously, he's like, um, like using this uh, in, in his conversation, but like... This is uh, what he's describing is a is a matter of historical record. Right. Like, um, he looked out for his master. When the field Negroes got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. The house Negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. 
He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes. And he could talk just like his master. Master, good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick? When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negro who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. Candace Owens's position within the conservative movement is basically offering moral permission to white supremacists to feel more comfortable in an increasingly more liberal, more tolerant society. Um, she puts a black face on white supremacy so that white, white supremacists can feel more comfortable and always point back to someone and go, a black person, and go, see, she agrees with me. That's basically, uh, you know, that's basically the role she fills, and she's very successful at it. She's very good at it. Back in, like, 2016, Candace Owens, I know uh, for a very long time, but um, Candace Owens uh, uh, used to, Candace Owens successfully sued the uh, Board of Education in, in the state of Connecticut, as a matter of fact, for being victim to a hate crime when she was growing up in school. Candace Owens, up until 2016, was, like, running an anti-Trump blog, and then turned heel and realized that it was infinitely more profitable to play this role as a commentator in the conservative circuit. Yep. Um, so it's a hot place to be right now. Yeah. It's a no, real it's, hot, it's, I don't, it, you being on the other side is a, it, like talk about the pendulum swinging like six years ago, like you, you were in the place everybody wanted to be. And now you're in a place that nobody wants to be. Yeah, in but, terms of, but in terms of your approach and you're, but I'll and take you're still it, running and you're still I'll, running it, which is, yeah, but I'll, I'll, but great. I'll take it one step further. Because 10 years ago, it was also still a place that no one wanted to be at as well. And I was right. still saying the same things. Like, I I have videos from, like, 2016, 2017 that I often uh, go back to to show a chat when I, whenever I'm talking about, like, something that's an issue that has persisted since then. Like, um, like my video on Jordan Peterson. Back then, Jordan Peterson was seen as, like, this liberal guy when he very clearly wasn't. And... I, I, you know, I used to make videos about how he is actually a right wing reactionary who engages in like ridiculous, nonsensical positions and is oftentimes like a historical or unscientific in his like commentary. And many even liberals would get mad at me for saying this because they were like, what are you talking about? He's just a guy who wrote a really cool book and cries and, a lot and, and, you know, and, and cries a lot. Now he's like much more open about being a, a right winger, of yeah. course. Yeah. But, um, but that's the thing, like. I, I come from a background where my position was even less popular uh, 10 years ago. And at least now with Bernie Sanders, with AOC, with the squad and like democratic socialism becoming like a little bit more um, uh, permissible to advocate for in public. Uh, I would say that I am, you know, obviously in a less fortunate position than I would be. Uh, when I was in like 2017, when everyone was like, I'm a radical. Everyone was like, I'm a, I'm the most woke guy. I'm the most progressive guy. Uh, but uh, it's still, I think the situation is still infinitely better than like 2014, 2015, 2016. What, wait, so, what, what situation? The is situation for the left and like uh, leftist visibility and like being uh, openly progressive. I would say there's at least like safe harbor for my uh my opinions now than there were in 2014 i think i mean i think it's i think that could change quickly i think yeah. that i think that's i think that's at risk you know what i'm saying like yeah like dude there's there's a lot first and foremost like just a just a just a bookend like the candace owen stuff like i, I she she kind of said one time that i have an underbite which i don't think i have an I don't think I have an underbite. Like my, I had braces. My teeth are pretty. Dude, you have you have Giga Chad jaw, dude. You do the do the do this. Do the. What is it? What is that? No, there's no. I don't have that type of jaw. You have a you have a. Look, I don't have that. I have a huge nose. I have a huge nose, bro. And anyways, get back to what I was saying. She once said that I have a, an underbite, which is fine. 
I'm not here to, to slam anyone. I don't do a lot of slamming of people just because I, I don't like that. And I, that's not the type of energy I like to put out into the world. I like to stay positive. And, and, but, I, but I would say that, it's, that she is inarguably a hate farmer. I, I would say that she is inarguably a hate farmer. She, yeah. is, she is monetizing the same type of negative energy that so many other people are on the internet right now. And when you, when you go on X and you see me arguing, I'm not arguing for any other reason besides that is the energy that I, that I, that I despise so much. I, that is the energy that is draining our society so much. And, and, and all of these people who are standing on this pedestal of moral high ground that they are going to wake us up. They're going to wake the people up who have been sheep, who have been lied to for so long the, the, the biggest lie being told right now is that it's okay for us to hate each other. All of this, all of this division is being sown by the same people that, that, that these brainiacs are claiming to, to know their game and be able to see through it. You're just simply doing their work for them. Yeah. That division that, that the government and that mainstream media has been pushing down to us is now being done by pundits on but, on twitter yeah and, and by the way formerly known as twitter it, it, it always it, for the record that always was the case um i i use the direct example that like back in the day you had in like 2014 2015 you had gamergate and you had like sjw compilations right people used to love making these videos about how like look at these woke issues crying like they're bullying ah. people and crying at the same time. Yeah, the ah, like yeah, Trump is yeah, elected. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the irony is conservatives always had their own version of that as well, but because they so very deliberately crafted this one-sided argument that it was the it was the so like the leftists and the SJWs, the social justice warriors that wanted to like censor opposition, and many of them did for sure. Absolutely. That that, um, that this narrative was presented. And has never gone away from our our collective public consciousness that this is somehow a liberal position. Conservatives, would you be shocked if I were to tell you that in that same time frame, conservatives were re responsible for the overwhelming majority of books being banned in schools, as they are now no, as well. No, that's not surprising whatsoever. Yeah. No, 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 in no, no. Entire... The, the, the double-edged sword that of all of this is no one wants to see. No one wants to talk about that. There, the amount of hypocrisy that exists on both sides is insane. Yeah. The, the thing is, I, Hassan, I won't come on here and and claim to be in the same realm as you in terms of my in terms of my political thought processes. I won't. I'm not. I'm. 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 Bro, there's a lot of places where you and I differ. I'm by no means a leftist. I will get called a leftist online constantly. Yes, I'm calling as a, out as a, as a pejorative too. They're like, oh, you. Leftist, like yeah, like it's gonna make me go cry in the bathroom or something. I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm yeah. I, I very much am policy based. I, I, I have certain thoughts on certain on certain things, and I believe that's where all of us are. If you if you ask me my if you ask me my thoughts on abortion, I'll give you my thoughts on abortion. I believe women should ha have un you know requisited access to to uh, abortion rights. Okay. To, yeah, it's a it's to, a medical it's a medical decision that should be left to a medical professional and the person who's the carrier to an to an end. Do I believe that women should have? I'll just say it, bro. I'm not say scared it. to say it. Do I believe that women should, that that third trimester <laughs> abortion should be a a, a a thing? I believe that there should be adoption considered. I believe that there should be other outlets besides that because at some point a fetus does become a child yeah so so listen can i can kill, I, kill you, me for it can, no, you know no, what I'm no, saying? call no, me no. a conservative or no 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 one is gonna say that trumper no one is gonna say that um it's it's not many people think that like many people think that your position on this is like being led by some ideological some some ideological <laughs> uh uh reasoning that like thinks that you want to control what women can and can't do. It's actually guided by a lack of clear-cut mainstream narratives. Uh, and this is, I think, a, a, uh, a, a issue with liberal media in general. Uh, not openly educating people who are open-minded, such as yourself, on the reality of third trimester abortions. There is not a single... Would it surprise you if I were to tell you that there is not a, a single, single state, state that allows in this country... 
that allows unrestricted third trimester G- abortion. G- good, good. So I yeah. guess like I'm in line with the current it's belief not, set there. So New York's it's not, not real. New York, New York cuts no. it at what? Two? Try it two? No. It, it, the only way that doesn't mean that third trimester abortions don't happen. They do. They are very, very, very phenomenally rare. Rare. Now, why does it happen? Medical, Only, me, a medical problem for the woman exactly. that, could, that could risk her life, which, which exactly. obviously makes complete sense. And, and of course, there are going to be times. That, that's the other thing that I want to start exactly. this stream off with today. Your chat will get it, because let's just be honest. You got, a, you got a fucking smart audience base, bro. These people are interested in these types don't, of topics. Don't, don't no, tell I'm gonna, them. I'm going to say it, bro. If they're watching this type of stuff and they're paying attention to this stuff, they clearly have an intellectual, uh, an intelligence quotient, and they know what, what's going on, right? Don't pander to them. They don't fucking know anything. They're dumb as hell. Nuance. I want to tattoo that that word across my forehead. Yeah, nuance, I, nuance is, and charitability. Is, nuance is, and charitability. It is such a it is such an avoided term in today's day and age. When I say anything that contains any type of nuance or gray area, I am labeled as a, a fence sitter. Oh, you can't pick a side, pussy. You can't pick a side. Well, but you Being have. Sec- but you have on the abortion issue. You have picked a side. Do you I don't think that, that women. I don't believe that biological men should play in women's sports. Okay, so you have so okay, so again, does that make in a, a ferocious right winger? I before, don't think that biological men should play women's sports. I am going to pee really quickly, and I'm going to talk <laughs> no, to you no, about don't that. Don't leave me on that. Don't yeah. leave me on okay, that. Okay, well, here's the thing. <laughs> don't leave me on that. Just like what you just said, <laughs> yeah. about uh, third trimester abortion. Oh, here we go. Just exactly the same principle exists for uh, the concept of like biological men playing in. Uh, women's sports what do you mean by that it's not a thing or it's incredibly rare no not only is it incredibly rare but also beyond that the the it is it is simply designed as a talking point that is uh that is divisive because the conservative movement's overarching goal is to erase trans people from public and existence to, and to drive fear i'm i'm, yes. I'm with i'm with now, you now i I'm can tell you. you the exact and detail the exact lobbying groups i've seen the commercials on television the exact lobbying groups that actually came up with this narrative in 2015 2016 north carolina wanted to implement a bathroom bill they said trans women should not be allowed in women's restroom okay this was before uh, donald trump i mean right around the time when donald trump was running for president actually sure. 2016 sure. donald trump back then said the f- are you guys doing let people piss wherever they want to piss <laughs> uh, uh caitlin <laughs> jenner can come piss in trump tower in, in the in women's restroom <laughs> yeah basically i don't care you know why trump said that because he was pandering probably well not only that but uh, but trump is a very good room reader he reads the room very well right because at the time everyone was like do you mean trans women can't piss in the women's <laughs> right, right, restroom? Right, 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 right. That's idiotic. Like, what are you, what are you talking <laughs> about? How people do gonna, what they want to do. How are you going to figure out who's a trans woman and who's not, first right. of all? Like, that's insane, right? Um, uh, This would be impossible to enforce anyway, and it's just like a really stupid restrictive law. The public actually was very upset at this bill even being passed or even being talked about. Hollywood said that they would pull support from the entire state. They would never actually, they, they would uh, never have a single set on the state ever again like entire industries were very upset about it and the collective consciousness realized that this was a silly ass way to try and shit on trans people the republicans learned their lesson from that they went back to the drawing board because the ultimate goal was always to vilify trans people and say that they're like pedophiles and say that they're like which is harming which children is rid- which is ridiculous yeah. see like so, I'm- <laughs> so but that narrative is also again a normie like yourself you're not gonna Agree with that you're gonna be like i know trans people that's ridiculous you're being you know a, a monster for yep. saying such a thing for sure right so but a normie like you yep. they found out because they focus tested this a normie like you cares about what sports sports <laughs> is uh, no no listen to an extent sports <laughs> sports in the way that it is designed in the american <laughs> consciousness right is one of the only areas where we can actually come close to a real meritocracy. Okay? There is no like there is no world in which if LeBron isn't the goat, he's actually getting uh a top billing, right? Right. Because it is meritocratic ultimately. So there is a baked in concept, a principle of fairness in sports that people believe and abide by. For sure. So they realized 
if you want to be anti-trans, you have to pair that up with an area with a, with a narrative of fairness. Trans people participating in sports is unfair because trans women are actually stronger than cis women, you know, uh, what you called biological women. And, and trans people are actually indecently trying to maliciously enter the arena of I don't, sports. I don't think that's the case. I no, don't, no, no, I don't, this I, is, you, no, no, no. I know you're not saying that, but, but I'm just that saying is I, how don't they agree, I don't agree. It. Yeah, I don't that's agree with that That's how they presented thing. it. I think they're just trying to fit into and, to the... Yeah. To, go ahead, sorry. And, and here's the thing. That was a phenomenally successful narrative. Because if you look at the actual like uh, approval ratings of such an marginal, such an incomprehensible thing that no one should ever even think about beyond like uh, beyond uh, unless you were constantly prodded to think about it, you would never think about it. Um, the the uh, this issue basically was hammered in to the public consciousness as a deliberate mechanism to write anti-trans bills which were very damaging not only to the tr to the small like two or three trans students that were like participating in athletic competitions in some states like Kansas there was literally four trans girls that were participating let me, in competitions let me, let me just go sorry um it was it was the bill was dangerous but, but beyond that it actually harmed in places like Ohio cis women because they implemented how are you going to figure out who's trans and who's not they literally started saying that they were going to push for bills like penis inspection day. That's, it sounds like a f joke, but you have a Republican party that was now pushing for, that was now pushing for bills to, to say if a parent in the opposing team decides that like there might be suspicion that there's a trans girl playing on the opposing team, then, then someone has to come in and check that if they're trans or not. Ridiculous. But, but my point is, to to call a problem scarce or rare and and use that as a rationale to avoid the discussion especially for a uh, a a a situation that is becoming as you can tell based on statistics more and more of a prevalent problem over the uh, not sorry, not a prevalent problem more of a prevalent issue over the the short term here it's a it's a situation that needs to be discussed like 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 it's like okay if you if you have a child and See, someone in the chat said it. The fact that it is rare makes it doesn't uh, makes it not a problem, though. Well, I guess I thought you, he was trying to say the fact that it's rare does not make it not, make a, it problem, not a problem. Not a problem. Um, That's I kinda, do. Does it does it make it a, a, a point that it needs to be a a a massive talking point that defines a community? Absolutely not. And, well, and 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 to your point, like it, this, it, this shouldn't be con harming. Conservatives the are very good at. My point was, conservatives are very good at building up imaginary problems for sure that correspond to their broader ideological goals, like the third trimester abortion thing. The way that conservatives talk about it, you would think women are personally getting incubated with semen for sure, so they can have a a uh, for funsies third trimester abortion. That is not the reality. But the impact of legislation does actually harm a shit ton of women because now they can't get uh, they can't get abortions for ectopic pregnancies, right? Like right. things that actually harm, harm the carrier. Them, yeah. Pregnancy across the board in the United States of America can be a really harmful endeavor, regardless. Especially when you look at some of these numbers, like um, um, the amount of uh, the percentage of the black women that die in the process of pregnancy or during birth. Um, is is uh, unimaginably disproportionately high in comparison to white women for example like we have a real issue Socio socioeconomic we well it's not just the socioeconomic issues uh, but it, we just have a real problem with like our healthcare structure it's like fundamentally busted do you know which, how long i've been looking for a therapist i've yeah <laughs> like, you know, bro, I, yeah like it's and it's you're cool. rich and that's and the I thing i have money yeah, bro that's, I the, have, that's the thing I like i have been looking to even try if you're to... rich you're still cooked so our systems fucked our medical system yeah. up but but basically well, the reason I was bringing those two those two situations up is is although I, I although I, I I do skew in the direction of of pers uh, you know of, of personal choice I I I, I have uh, 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 trans friends I have gay friends I love them I that that does there's never a day that goes by where my thought process or my sentiment towards those people is affected by any of the decisions that they make in their life it's just not but I but I I do wonder from time to time you know where 
policy does overlap with life. And I and I, I brought up the last topic just simply because, like, yeah, you say you end up having a, a daughter and she wants to be a, a, a wrestler and she goes up against a a you know a, a, a transgender woman. What what, do, what it's a conversation worth having if if and this is something we'll be talking about today if it's done responsibly and with people's yeah but the problem is it's the, not going to be but the problem is it never is the responsibly right. because the reality is the reason why this conversation is being had is because it's one blown out of proportion and two blown out of proportion by people with a secondary interest in wanting to have this conversation sure, over sure, and over again sure but because of the insanely rare occurrence of a a uh, trans athlete participating with cis athletes um it should be and was originally dealt with on a case by case basis yep. and broad sweeping legislation actually ends up harming cis women the very same yeah, yep. girls that like want to go and wrestle can now be called into question like what if you're kind of jacked as a as a cis woman and this happens all the time as well so like anti trans legislation ironically ends up harming uh more cis women that it ends up harming trans women because there aren't that many trans women to begin with right so uh this is something that a lot of women don't even realize or this is something a lot of people don't realize when they're like advocating for this kind of like restrictive policy so basically it's uh like i said it's a it's a very deliberately crafted uh conversation piece that makes sense on its face you're like wait a minute okay well i think yeah like trans women are going to have some biological differences to uh, cis women this is true right both bone density specifically or even like some level of testosterone naturally occurring testosterone production but um even on that front i think that uh, it is greatly exaggerated and overblown Ag which is why you agree which is why you always point to like a couple examples like one is i think fallon fox or whatever like there are a couple examples of trans athletes actually competing against cis women that have been successful but there's an infinite number more trans women competing against cis women and getting owned one common example uh i love to go back to is uh what's her face there was a swimmer remember uh um, and 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 <laughs> riley gaines that doesn't narrow it down very much <laughs> no there was a there was a there was a swimmer by the name of riley gaines which ironically also doesn't fit uh oh. she she doesn't even like fit the confines of like rigid gender ideology anyway like she's kind of she is a cis woman riley gaines and she's kind of jacked okay like she has like broad shoulders yeah, she has girl, like, yeah women she has have a, different makeups yeah because because there's biological diversity for sure. amongst uh, for sure. cis women as well because gender is uh socially defined whereas like <laughs> the the biological uh concept that we're talking about is sex right and even sex is not uh binary but uh bimodal rather which means like for example both myself and ben shapiro are men we're male oh God. and yet oh ben God. shapiro i mean it, this shows Where's like this going right th now? this shows the diversity is what i'm trying to say like what what what's, you would, what's the difference in, in ben's in, a man i'm a man yeah and um as our gender is is a man right you're six foot six but i'm six <laughs> foot four ben is five foot four Ben can't grow facial hair, and his voice never. Bro, broke. Ben's been getting a Ben's been having a rough yeah month, bro. We, we can get into that, but my He's been having my, a rough. My month. point was that like that diversity exists within someone who like For Riley sure. Gaines, who got fifth place, right? The, the, Riley Gaines got fifth place, tied to trans swimmer Leah Thomas, and she launched a political career off of this, yeah, yeah. and has never let it go, right? But Riley Gaines lost to four cis women before Leah <laughs> right, Thomas. Right, right, right. It's not like and Leah it's Thomas not like she the was in second place by a hand yeah, touch. Yeah, like yeah, Leah yeah, Thomas, yeah. the <laughs> trans athlete in question, right. lost to four cis women. Right, 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 so right, like, right. Whenever people talk about like trans athletes, they make it seem like trans people are superheroes. You know what I mean? Like they're just yacked and like and and absolutely eviscerated in the competition. <laughs> Many of the cases because and this is another thing conservatives love doing there are so many instances where conservatives would be like well what if someone just said they're a woman and then participated in competition uh, against women by falsely claiming that they were a woman there's not a single actual instance of that happening with the exception of conservative commentators doing it to prove a point all right right they can't find someone so they make the 
problems themselves. Listen, listen, Hassan, you don't have to school me on the idea that honestly, I'm gonna just say this the because I'll, I'll 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 go on both sides of it. The right is way it has a way worse problem of this of them using a a a a rare situation or a scarce situation to drive fear into their into their base. That's 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 that is their. F- entire game plan yeah, that's all they do like like yo if you if we don't vote for xyz candidate the the, the every mexican they're gonna is coming tra- into this country yeah they're all gonna turn put gonna- something into the water to turn everybody into a transgender swimmer and and bro and 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 this is what this is what i came on the show to talk about these conspiracy theories that we're going to discuss today are all just uh trojan horses for policy change in that direction that's what i'm trying that's exactly what i'm trying to say and so your point is taken the only reason i brought these two topics up was to establish the fact that i am not i am not some sort of i don't swing to either political side i just don't i'm very open policy wise to to issues on both on both sides of the fence in a nuanced and grace in a gray scenario yeah but but understand that like um it ba- I do have to pee, and I still have to pee. I'm just holding it in. Because I would love, I'll take some, I'll I didn't, field some dude, questions. I didn't want to drop you in after you said, no, no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, biological uh, women should have come pee. they suck. Like. Yeah, I didn't want you to, to, to get dropped into that. They would have <laughs> on the gauntlet. This is, one of the, this is one of the largest trans communities online. No, that's fine. I'm happy to be here, and I'm learning, bro. I'm learning. Like, you're, you're teaching me shit that I didn't know until today. I think, like, being, I think being charitable is, is a key part of this like being charitable to one another is a key part of this and like having mutual respect and uh i feel like i mean i definitely uh have figures that i don't respect and will openly like vilify them or openly belittle them um so i i definitely participate in this personally as well um i think though the difference is i'm still grounded within uh a a uh factual basis and also uh i i conduct analysis off of that facts uh off of those facts rather than rather than um you know endlessly uh endlessly foaming out of the mouth about <laughs> shit that's not real that's not really happening in the world <laughs> anyway oh, i'd like to be i'd like to be uh uh called mr burgerelli for um, the rest of the day today. Mr. Mr. Burgerelli. Burgerelli. Did you watch like that, that interview at I've all? Or no? some, I've seen some of it. Just why? Dude, we are at a we are in a wild time, bro. We are at a wild time uh right now on the internet. It's a it's a really scary place. You can say whatever you want about about uh the platform that is X formerly known as Twitter, but it, it dude, the stakes have been raised. Hassan, the stakes have been raised. Ooh, a hot take. Yeah, no, this is uh, <laughs> this is from a dude who actually despises me now, but he's making the correct point here. Um, uh, Boogie2988 says, hot take, video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures about why being a white man is bad, <laughs> which is not a thing that's happening in the world at all, right? In the world of video games, which you don't play because you're too busy. Uh, I, I, I play Call of busy, Duty. You're too busy traveling the world <laughs> and, you know... Eating the finest cuts of of meats, <laughs> of beef. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I'm exhausted from no, it. No, dude, I love watching your Instagram story is great because I'm like, this is what like this is what actually I should be doing, bro. You're welcome like, whenever like you real, want. Li- real influencing stuff <laughs> instead uh, of fucking duking it out. Well, you do that regardless. You do that on your off time <laughs> for free. Well, yeah, for, what for I what free. I do professionally, you're doing. <laughs> for leisure which is crazy for 112 dollars a month on x oh do you do you actually you gave your you, you gave your uh, uh uh bank information like i don't get any revenue from uh, Twitter. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter regardless i mean you're not gonna you're not gonna make anything anyways but but can you imagine if we started irl streaming bro like going place I, you know i love i love traveling food i am i'm going to australia is that your first one uh no, no, no. I've I've been to Japan. I've done no first that. one to Australia. Sorry. Oh yeah, I've never been to Australia Amazing before. Place. I'm going uh, on the on the 24th. I'll be in Australia. Dude, this little lover right here is uh, yeah, she's it, is she's special. It's a uh, it's a a rough week for me with dogs. I, I had to put my dog. Oh down. yeah, I heard. I I I, uh, I had to do that uh, during COVID. I had a a pit bull. Uh, his name was Fish, and uh, no, I I get that. It does get better. Uh, I will tell you. Yeah, this the the issue with it was for me was it's uh, it's my mom's dog, uh, Finny, uh, fox, sweet fox terrier, nine years old. She had uh, kidney disease for the past two years, 
and she just lives alone with my mom. And my mom is like my favorite person on the planet, her and Finney. And so by way of Finney having this happen in the past week, it affects my mom greatly and that affects me greatly. And yeah. I, I, I just want to say I had a um, yesterday was not a good day for me just in general mentally and also just dealing with this and i had a, a bit of a meltdown on jeff fm yesterday yeah people people sent me a clip of it um and they wanted to ask what was going on there i didn't watch it but um i mean like simply put like ryan who's a who's a recurring uh, recurring guest on the show he's on every episode you know great great kid and and somebody i've been friends with um he called in a couple months ago to deliver the news that his father had passed um the way that it was delivered was in a very like jovial manner. And that's how some people deal with, with, with death. That's how some people grieve. Yeah. You know, he was, he was doing lines of Coke off Jesus's face on, on, you know, uh, 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 what's the DVD called the Mel Gibson, uh, Christ passion, of, passion Christ? of Christ like doing them off the cover and everybody was laughing and joking so I made a a joke that was basically like hey I, I have a eight o'clock I have to go you know what I'm saying because yeah. it was just getting wild right and the yeah. whole conversation like made me uncomfortable a little bit um I guess evidently he had taken some some offense to that so when he called in yesterday I was actually actively like sad grieving like hardcore talking about the loss of my dog and how it was affecting my mom and he called in and just was like, hey, look, I got to still play with my cat. Like, haha, like, oh, sucks shit. to be you. Like, and kind of took that approach. And I just, I had a really weak moment. I flipped over the desk, like, smashed, like, Jeff's you podcast. You flipped mice. over the yeah, desk? You can pull it up if you want. Bro, what the <laughs> fuck? That's listen, awesome. I, 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 no, he deserves it, Jeff, okay? He <laughs> he deserves that smoke after He's what he did to me. right now. After what he did to me, he deserves that <laughs> retribution <laughs> righteous retribution no, Jeff got, nothing happened to jeff as a result he he loved it <laughs> oh, God. oh he put it in the front he yeah, put it bro. in the game you know, for jeff he it. Dude, he'll, he, he'll monetize my pain immediately bro that was, he did uh, no fuck that to, to 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 jeff's defense he called me he was very concerned about me when i left these are these are jokes but he was very concerned about me um and uh he he made sure that i that i was okay after but i had an emotional day yesterday and i and i apologized to to jeff's audience and and to jeff too for for having that moment death is hard bro it's really hard it was a really rough week for Dude. me and and i feel i feel bad about doing that and everything's yeah. everything's okay now by the but. way we we all love jeff for the record i i feel like i need to state this because like uh this is my my usual like politics audience and they don't know the the comings and goings of like my friendships or whatever right. or who these people even are maybe bro isn't that your barber exactly <laughs> yeah it's my it's my blind barber jeff but but anyway yeah no that's that's awesome i just i had a bad moment and like like this is like uh, guys this that type of stuff is unacceptable it makes for great programming like everybody's yeah. laughing at it but yeah you know um i i think i think the situation was was basically people <laughs> Live streaming my ass off right now. This shit's way too hard. You know what I'm saying? At Hassan Piker, you <laughs> piece of shit. Um, no, you 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 ruined his set harder than his landlord did. Maybe not that bad. Maybe not that bad. His 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 landlord fl flooded the whole set. Yeah. But um, I'm but joining no the war on landlords on the side of landlords after that one. Yeah, fuck this guy. Okay, he deserves to have his desk pulled over. I threw a chair too. Like I just. Bro. <laughs> Was that real? <laughs> like he sets it up as a teaser. Yeah, like, he put it as a teaser. Wait, where is it in the in, is it the end? Yeah, you can no, you can go back a little bit. Um before that. Uh back, 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 keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Right. So there's the call. Yeah. Honestly, you felt some type of way. More, sorry. Okay. Oh, it, well, you're here still. This is go the back call. just a little more. And apologize to you. I'm sorry that what I said. There that we day, go. This is two months late. Upset. You Thank you. More, you can hear the part about the dog. Like yeah, the, yeah. Okay. But well, you we don't, don't have, have to, to. We don't have to relive forget this. Forget it. Forget all okay. of it. Anyways, I, I. It just was a rough. It was a rough day for me. We have bad days as people. You know what I'm saying? And and honestly, like for me, with with how my brain works and my mind works like if i'd come on this show yesterday Hassan, like we wouldn't even be having a good conversation like i i yeah, I, I feel that i kind of met the di i'm kind of at the whim of my of my mind sometimes so yesterday was not a good day so but ask mike if day. he remembers that time i smoked him in qzar, QZAR at, at milford, milford amusement, amusement.
Oh, that's where I'm from, Milford, Connecticut. Shout out to anybody watching this in Connecticut right now. Also, well, apparently that, this guy. <laughs> yeah. Also, anybody that plays Qzar or Laser Tag. Uh, um. Okay. So yeah, they they wanted me to ask you this, so it's just a you know, yeah. Uh, I I get it though, and and people, it's so funny because like part of uh being I guess like influencers online, uh creates this like false uh narrative or, or or this false reality in the eyes of those who are watching that think that like they know better the personal relationships that people have that they're watching on camera and then they make up these like fan fiction they make up yeah they make up this like uh, they make up their minds on it and they're like no matter what you tell me I bet you're fucking faking it right now to right. save face. Like, I bet you actually hate Jeff <laughs> and you hate Ryan <laughs> and what you did was unacceptable and, like, it's really fucked up and I will hate you forever for right, it. Right. Like, that sort of shit. And it's really, it's really interesting uh, and it, it is a totally new phenomenon. But going back to another thing that the internet does that you brought up earlier, like, back in the day, if you saw someone watch, reading the National Enquirer, you would know to avoid that person yeah, yeah, yeah. if they thought if they thought it was serious, right. right? These context clues that we use, the overall like sussing out of the vibes, I would say, in a person-to-person -person interaction, we do not have online. So because we do not have that online, everyone, when they are just writing out a script, a text online under the guise of anonymity, especially can come across as reasonable even if they're saying insanely unreasonable <laughs> shit and i think that has broken people's brains a little bit the more we only have connections with other humans online rather than in person the more we lose sight of the the, the like what makes us human a social animal because being a social animal is changing at a rapid clip and we don't have a way of like dealing with that, in my opinion. We're cyborgs now. Yeah. Like, and like, like, like I, I, two years ago, I was fighting this. I was telling people, like, yo, this is dangerous. Yeah. This, by the way, this is dangerous. More, more than dangerous. It's beyond dangerous. It is, it is, it is a destroyer. It is a destroyer of worlds, a destroyer of happiness, a destroyer of contentness, a destroyer of it is a a a promoter of the grass is greener. It is a promoter of 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 disinformation. And and all of this, all of this ideation behind behind the truth is somewhat is on the internet. Social media is promoting the truth. If you're able to go and find the truth, actually find the truth right now, you're working your ass off to find that truth. Yeah, no, it it's, is it's not lost. in your face. It's all lost this, in a sea. All, all of the people that claimed, as I said earlier, to be the saviors, the people that were going to save us from the mainstream media and their lies are the new mainstream media. The people that replace them are now the pundits who are getting the payments from the brands to promote lies. It is the same corporate ownership structure that existed with CNN and Fox News. It is just now democratized for individual personalities. Yeah. End of story. So the idea that there's some insane overload of truthhood that exists on the internet is stupid it's not true you, unless you're looking for it deeply and deeply researching your your evidence yeah yelling that's why i was talking about like the sjw's or people that made sjw compilations in the past have become like the same hysterical people that are constantly losing their minds at like one one trans person getting a bud light beer uh, <laughs> ad for an instagram story and then, like, that drives discourse for, like, eight weeks. And people are making rap songs about how, like... I called it getting one can. Like, getting one guy, but instead you just got one can. Like, there was one... Dylan Mulvaney's face appeared on one singular Bud Light can. And that caused so much chaos. Why? Because <laughs> people are, one, bored. Two, looking for reasons to be mad at shit. Because there yep. is a lot of, like unrealized anger festering and that part is actually understandable this is what i try to ex explain to people all the time is that you have a right to be angry and you have a you uh, are understandably upset if you're working a shitty f job where your boss is asking you all day every day and you have no future prospects right like it, it seems like you'll never own a home the the american dream that was promised to your parents 
is never going to happen for you. That and and the the constant like fear of going into debt uh or the the realization that like if you lose that job when you that you took on not because you love it or pas- or are passionate about it but because you want to you need to pay your student loan debt, right? You took that job on. If you lose that job, your health care is tied to it. So you now lost your health care. So one accident could cause you, uh, comp- uh, could put you in complete financial ruin. That has real psychological harm. That is a real impact in the collective consciousness of everyone experiencing it. Dude, and by the way, you're also describing the lucky ones. Those, yeah. those people are the blessed ones. Yeah. The people with a job, with a, with, you know, a student debt to pay. We, we have to pay student debt. There's people living, veterans living under the bridge right now yeah. with their sick dog trying to find a way to get their thoughts in order because they can't find resources yeah. to actually get themselves better. They're addicted to drugs like I was. They, they, they are addicted to they, – they, they, there, there are so many – lost and forgotten souls in this country that that to talk about the people that are suffering under the rule of a boss in a corporate setting those are just the lucky ones and yeah. they're and they're still have every right to be stressed out yeah but all i'm saying and, and by the way to go back to a topic that you describe over you know or talk about more than than anybody when you ask me how i'm doing or if someone asks me how i'm doing it, it almost to a point nowadays comes irresponsible it becomes irresponsible for me to ever say i'm having a bad day look yeah. around us look yeah. at what is going on in, the, in gaza look at what is going on on some of the streets in our own country yeah it, and, and and so and so oh my god dude you know you're you're absolutely correct and and what i was trying to say is that that resentment and that anger and that animosity creates an environment of volatility and you are desperately looking for what I call uh, an exit ramp or a pressure valve. Sure. And that pressure valve is directed by the very same independent voices that are still being paid by the very same corporations, <laughs> the millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> they to, just sp- they to, just switch their spending. Focus <laughs> yeah. your yeah to to focus your anger and resentment on, oftentimes the most marginalized people that don't have a voice, like the undocumented migrant crossing the border. How villainized, the homeless, how villainized have they become? Yeah, like, or the oh homeless, or the homeless person, like the homeless veteran, or just any homeless person at all, or the addict, uh, or uh, and and people love like looking for that release. Um, I, this was ironic because like I was just watching uh, Jinxie talk about this with the Nelk Boys, which is like probably not the. Surprisingly, uh, a a clear conversation here. I brought you up on a po- on a Jinxie podcast too. That's coming out next week. By the way, we had the Jinxie podcast before Full Send. I just want to say this right now on this show. We had the Jinxie podcast before Full Send. Out of respect to Full Send and to Jinxie, we bagged no. that episode. No, we let Full Send. Fu- we we Full, Full Send Full put Send. it. No, Full Send put it out first, which is fine. And you can't but like, nuance nuance. I know these guys. Whatever you guys have your thing. I'm not going to get into it. But we do have a Jinxie podcast. Screaming is harder than construction work. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. We what, did talk about it. We yeah, did. He, he's we actually did talking talk about, about that it. here uh, oh, with I, the Full Send Boys where they, like, agree with me. Everyone yelled at me on Twitter over that. I, know, I saw it. I because saw it. it was, like, it was literally me being, like, I worked in sales. And in sales, you have, like, an opportunity to breathe. You're not constantly, like, client-facing. So, as far as, like, my social battery, it runs out... Uh, way worse after nine hours of streaming because i'm constantly on i'm constantly trying to do people pleasing and the only like real adult like actual real job uh that i could uh compare it to is like service sector stuff and like customer facing work like you know being in a call center and i also said at the time not to relitigate this uh, over and over again (laughs) but at the time i basically uh in that clip that is of course deliberately cut out of context to make it seem like i'm saying like it's a much harder job to be a streamer. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Um, that that uh, there are different aspects of of every work that is uh, uniquely difficult in different ways. <laughs> Your chat does not want to hear this at no, all. No, no, because they know, like, they know that they always Somebody just set them in purgatory. <laughs> yeah, no, they 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 know that this like brings about like the worst, oh, most fucking toxic for weirdos. Sure, for sure, the very I, same I, weirdos that like very deliberately 
clipped it out of context and immediately like came star was tweeting about it blah 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 right like and it became this like massive piece uh, in the discourse for like a week and still people are still talking about it right but when but when but, but when podcast context is added to it the statement that you made and when the full context is viewed makes complete sense yeah Be, being always on for a stream or for any or for podcasting or whatever it is definitely socially and mentally could be for certain people like first of all how the f are you going to argue personal sentiment you're making a statement for yourself well, be being someone that has worked in both positions and saying for me yeah this is what make is harder for me yeah. when you remove what you cannot remove the context of someone saying this is how i feel about something guess what as soon as you say this is how i feel it's an inarguable topic you yeah. can argue the substance of it but you can but you can't argue that this is how the person feels That's yeah just but, the, the, but the, the difference is because uh it, it's it's just like there's a financial imperative there it's infinitely better to like rob it of its context and then <laughs> shove an underlying narrative to, especially someone like myself like i i work directly with labor organizers and and you know fund uh strike funds and and like work with them directly this is like my advocacy for the most part revolves around labor organizing right right, right. so my entire point always is to improve workplace conditions for everyone so they can also have some free time and pursue a life of dignity and find dignity in their work as well find some level of fulfillment find some level of autonomy in their adult lives where we spend 80 percent of our adult lives working for someone else in in the most normal circumstances the point is uh you don't want to talk about that so you just try to discredit me personally by being like well he claims to fucking care about this shit but look at him he's so spoiled and selfish and and bratty why did i bring this up though because there is a financial imperative there is a there's a reason why people do it people write people make videos about it without actually looking at the context without actually looking at the nuance rob it of its nuances and actually advocate in the exact opposite direction of my own personal beliefs that's what frustrates me to no end i mean here these guys like you know i i i, I normally don't bring these guys up at all but like blind i mean this is one great example of like people who have ideologically positioned themselves against uh against me i guess and and everything i believe in streaming is more draining than regular jobs millionaire hassan and asmin gold complain Six hundred thousand views update they respond 700,000 views like there is obviously there's obviously like a like a like an audience that's looking for it right and you just kind of feed into it as a content creator deliberately uh hate you, farming dirty yeah. laundry pays the bills yeah. and 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 100 percent. and 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 look it like no disrespect to those guys we have disagreements right like we have disagreements on issues but uh, ultimately it is just knowing full well that there is more nuance to the subject matter you're doing it specifically because you want to make like what would seven hundred thousand views get you in adsense on, I have no on, idea. on youtube yeah uh like a cool 5k spot no on a, on a podcast on a longer format podcast yeah maybe between 5 and 10k depending but i would assume that their channel is probably not i, I don't know i don't know what they talk about are they are they like super absurd I don't know who those guys are. Are they super absurd? Are they like fresh and fit? Like, is it like, yo, you're a five no, and no, you're no, a whore? No, they're not. They're not. They're not. They, oh, they're, they're, not. Okay. they're more. They, I would say, are. I think, as far as I understand, they, they are like a more reasonable. They're they shit on fresh and fit. Um, they're nowhere near as bad. They well, have Mitch, some. I'm, well, check them out. They have, I, they have I, some underlying, uh, like right wing opinions, but they are very good at like. And, and some left-wing opinions as well, but they're very good at, like, centering themselves in the conversation. A lot of people do this thing where they will talk about issues devoid of, uh, devoid of their, like, own personal biases or own personal ideologies because it's very good for people like you. You want to listen to someone who presents themselves as objective and neutral. Many people just want that. So I think I, like I, 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 I wake up every day and I listen to uh well not every day, but I listen to the daily on on like I yeah. like listening to like if I could watch any do do, do unbiased news organizations still exist? Is AP no. still considered is AP considered no, there is to be no, well, considered to be an unbiased I am I am a believer that there is no there's no such thing as like being unbiased. Because 
like neutral here this is mlk quote that i uh i point to regularly neutrality in the face of injustice is siding with the oppressor so if you are a neutral party a neutral For observer sure. uh, and and, and no one's, claiming no that there's neutrality like no, but no one's asking. No one's talking about. You're talking about neutrality as it pertains to the abstinence or omission of facts, right? Like, I'm not. That's not yeah. what I'm talking about. Well, I'm well, talking about neutrality as it exists in a way of presenting those facts without a biased viewpoint on said facts, right? So, like, so, like, n now, now, here, let's. This is the perfect transition for this. The, 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 the reason why ha we're having the conversation that we're having today is because. You now are having conversations that exist with the full omission of facts. Facts, proof, and evidence is no longer a prerequisite for conversation. The, re the, the, the reason why I have been so deeply ingrained into the conspiracy theory conversation over the past two weeks has, because, has been because of an influencer fighter by the name of Ryan Garcia. It has, been a, it has been a topic of discussion over the past two weeks. And to be completely honest with you, Ryan Garcia in in my eyes is not the subject of the conversation it is in in my opinion the audience response to what ryan garcia has been saying yeah. that is that is the real point of discussion here how scaled that response was was worrisome for me and that is why i got so involved with it i think it's that is a byproduct of like elon must take over twitter though i think but like, it was not just on x no, it no, was no, not no it i was, know it, it's the same exact motivations that i just showed you with like why you would take a clip out of context knowing full well that it's most likely clipped out of context and like run with it and present a narrative it's because people do have a vested interest in like click farming and hate farming or sometimes you know leaning on conspiracy theories no matter how nonsensical they may appear at face value because they know there's an audience for it right it's exciting it is uh it's it's basically like clickbait uh, but yeah. on steroids, <laughs> clickbait that does have a damaging impact on discourse and the public, co and, the and, collective and, and consciousness, people, and people's lives. And, and by yeah. the way, like by the way, like I'm, I am, oh, I am always excited, willing, and excited to come on shows that I that I consider to be skewing slightly in a certain direction. As 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 much as as much as you are considered to be <laughs> liberal, social, whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? I believe that in in, in the face of a debate, when presented with factoids, you are willing to be malleable and shiftable in your opinions on certain things. Yeah, I, I would hope. And and yeah, and, and, and you sometimes will not I get things wrong, and I admit that, and will literally openly even apologize for it for getting something wrong as well. This is something that like a lot of people forget. Which, by the way, you get punished for. So I'm not even fucking doing that when I do that for some kind of like saving of face. I'm doing that specifically because I think it's the right thing to do. I don't know. And, and also maybe I just feel like, I, cause there's someone on the, there's someone on the conservative side that I go and have conversations with all the time too, by the name of, of Patrick Bet David. And, I love and, Patrick and, and, Bet David. Okay, thank you. And we and, love, and, we and, love no, Patrick Bet David. No, dude, no, you don't actually. Yes, we do. No, you don't. Are you're you fucking, not valued? No, you're fire, Are you I, not I, I valued? Was, I literally tain? fell into, please. I fell into your trap. You just, screwed me bro because i literally i didn't know where you were on this topic what? no listen to me no listen to i am me. value chained every day stop it of my stop life it. stop it i talked to Patrick. i want to go on his podcast you he will he will you can go on his yeah, podcast he, he i, I my, can't speak for him i don't know if no, he, go he, on his would, he definitely would the only issue is you have to fly to fort lauderdale no i i know it's that's a that's can, a problem can, can i can i please say this uh, Pat, that's Patrick, not the only issue the only Patrick, issue is not that Patrick then i would Beck have to David, be surrounded Patrick by Beck David is a, patrick Beck david i will speak for him specifically don't not who don't get go there is a smart is a smart man and he does his research and he is well spoken i'm not saying that he, that you're going to agree with all his topics and i'm also not saying that he does not miss on certain topics you miss on certain topics but, but who's the decider? Who's the decider? I'm the right? decider. So, okay, okay. So you viewing PBD from this side is going to look very different than how I view PBD from a more centrist position. No, no, let's, no. Let's I know. be honest. I know PBD is great at 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 like uh, value tainting people that are so like much. no, 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 no that are you. that are devoid of like any sort of like theoretical <laughs> underpinning in the way that they uh, view the world. Right? Oh, uh, can we get can we get a specific to to topic? Okay, okay, dude. But I, not like a but I'm not kidding when I say I love him. I, this well, is not a joke. He reminds me of my uncle. He's like Bizarro Jank. So, no, I, <laughs> I, I love him. Yeah, he's the best. He's why the don't best. you just go? Why don't you do a show with I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just like...
I, I, yeah, you're right. Flying to Fort Lauderdale kind of sucks. But then also, uh, <laughs> I'm going to sit there in between like three 45 year old guys wearing the, the tightest suits. Well, they have, well, they have their own internal drama on the show. Oh, they, they have, do? they have a, a, a centrist leaning co co host that the audience who obviously his audience is like, Pretty much like MAGA ultra conservative. Yeah, hates like they do not like this guy. I, I'm 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 drawing a blank on the exact f layout. I, I love names. him, but 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 fuck, which is so unfair. Dude, I love him. But I then love he's got. But then wait, yo, PBD has the perfect build out for the conservative narrative. He's got he's got a he's got a centrist, not a centrist at all. A right leaning centrist that roots the conversation somewhat in a in a uh 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 uh, uh devil's advocate you know situation and then he has a full-on national inquirer author to to his left side Wait, that is, is that that really does believe michelle obama's a man can I, someone can someone fill me in on the on the names really quick I, Wait, i'm so sorry hold on hold on, this, hold on. let's let's look it up let's look them up and then you can tell me who the guys are yeah, yeah, yeah like wait fuck Dude, I love him. I put my friends on him. Like we an, all watch his shit. I can't take you. Bro. I'm I not. Can't it's take not you. a joke. I'm not like the thing is. A lot of people think that I'm like this guy who is like, oh, don't watch him. Like if you disagree with him, like no, I I, I derive entertainment value out of everything, <laughs> especially someone like Patrick who is like genuinely incredibly fun to watch, like. Can, can you do a can you do a a a, 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 a poll in your chat? Is this the guy? Is this the right wing guy? <laughs> no, 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 that's a guest. Yeah, he just looks like an accountant. It's his, no, so okay, okay. Is this the center left bro, guy? Bro, bro, yes. Oh, yes. He's, no, he's not center left. No, he. They're all right. They're all right. Dude, are, are, I'm gonna get. I'm so annoyed right now, dude. I need to get this dude's. Wait, 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 hold on. Because I'm oh. botching the names, bro, and that's so disrespectful. I, 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 thank you. Okay, Adam, Adam, Adam leans. Slightly more towards the middle, it seems like on a lot of topics. He prevents a he prevent he presents a devil's advocate to Patrick. Patrick, I don't care what you say. Patrick is a well-researched, well-spoken host. Does he does he does he fall into the trap of some conspiratorial shit? Maybe yeah. he he's, he's he, he strong he strongly believes that Hillary Clinton has a has a defined hit squad. Fine. Uh see, I won't even disagree with him on it. How about that? Actually, are you are you there or no? <laughs> I'm not not there. Okay, okay. So maybe he's not such a bad guy. Okay. Regardless. I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't think he's a bad guy. I think okay. he's fucking hilarious. Okay, and then and then and Vincent Vincent holds down for like the for like the far right. <laughs> like he holds down like yeah, the okay. hardcore. I remember, like I remember Vincent. MAGA. Yeah. Like he says some crazy. But but by the way. All three of them are. I, I loved sitting with them. I had a great conversation with them. I call Patrick on the phone. Talk to him when I when I run into situations like this Ryan Garcia thing. I called Patrick. I talked to him on the phone about Dude, it. Their their analysis of the Ryan Garcia situation was so oh, awesome. Was, well, okay, sorry. Fill me in. Because fill like we watched it. Because at the time I was like, what's going on with this Ryan Garcia shit. Like he's obviously having like a mental health episode, right? And and he was like, you have this. Like, I, I love pulling myself out of it or looking at it from the outside because, like, I don't know these guys, right? Having, like... And remember that you don't know them. That's it, part of, yeah. that's important part having, of the conversation. Having, like, four 50-year-old guys in, like, skin-tight suits sitting there They're and corporate. being, like... Yeah, sitting They're there. corporate. He has a corporate. Patrick has a, a large conglomerate. Yeah, it, sitting there and being, like, yeah, so... Uh, it seems like um, this is exactly like when you're in high school and a, a girl wants to you and then you say uh, oh, you don't oh. want to her and then people why, say... Why is he Arnold Schwarzenegger? Dude, why is he Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. That's not correct, I'm bro. trying to do his voice. I can't dude, do his dude, voice. Dude, he's... I, bro, Patrick has, a, no, he, Patrick he has loves, a great backstory. Patrick has a great backstory. He, lo he, doesn't come love, from he doesn't come from money. He worked hard to get where yeah. he is. He was and, in the and, army. He was. He was in the army. All he cared about was f bitches and also drinking shitty beer Dude, on the weekends. Now that's like I don't even know what accent that is. Is it Iranian? Not Armenian, I'm doing bro. no, no. I'm, well, first of all, he's like he he he's a Assyrian. Uh, oh, Assyrian. From, sorry, not Armenian. Yeah, he's Assyrian, Assyrian from bad. Iran. I know him better than you. Don't come <laughs> at me on my. F Patrick Pet David, I am literally Yo, a PPD head, dog. I hope I hope when next time I'm on his show, I I he's gonna present all this to me, and I'm gonna have to d d yeah, list my, my experience. You have to be careful here. Bro. You have to be careful here. So if you like this clip and you want to.
Dude, I love Patrick but David. Ukraine. Candace Owens explains why America should not support Ukraine. What? Our <laughs> president. He's he's so good. I'm bro. When he when he's just straight up, but I think he's Assyrian and Armenian, by the way, but from Iran. Um <laughs> One of his parents, one of his parents, uh, this, is is uh, is a is a uh, Mossadegh supporter. His other parent, his other uh, uh, either his father or mother, I don't know which is which, uh, is a supporter of the Shah. So he grew up in an environment where they're always talking politics. Okay, let me tell you something, dude. I know his backstory. Okay, you seem to be more valuing than anybody. So, yeah. No, this is my favorite clip. If if there is someone, oh, I know I saw this. If I there is someone, this. I saw this. Like when I saw this, I fell in love with this man. No, it reminds me of that clip of the uh, the guy. Why are like, you gay? Yeah, why yeah. are you gay? Yeah, he, 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 you he's are just gay. A, he's the, I'm a fanboy. Like, choose which of the two things to put in school, and you have. He's so serious, dude. He's as serious as a heart attack That's when he goes. Uh, are you gay? <laughs> And he's like objectively wrong here, right? Like you don't <laughs> learn being a homosexual. Like that's not how that works. And there's enough evidence to suggest that that's not how that works. But he is so honest in the way that he legitimately believes that shit. And I respect it. As opposed to like, there's a guy who, who's running for Senate in Ohio against Sherrod Brown. The, the, the MAGA Republican who's like slated to maybe even unseat Sherrod Brown, the Democrat in Ohio who is gay, like, is, uh, is a closeted gay man, and he recently got outed. Uh, he recently got outed because uh, he used to be pro-gay back in the day, like, super pro-gay back in the day in, 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 when he was a used car salesman, who then, uh, when now he's, like, a MAGA Republican running for uh, office, is... Uh, very much like anti-gay, right? He's a grifter. Right, right. Right? And he recently, he like literally just, I think today or yesterday, got outed as as uh, like being on adult friend finder, like looking for cock, right? <laughs> All the way back in 2018. Or, or no, uh, 2008. So his name is Bernie Moreno. Exactly. So there are guys like that who see how things are going in the conservative uh, ethos and lean into it, right? And like present a false narrative and are like super, oh my God, I had not even seen what he looked like until this very moment. Trump back Senate candidate faces GOP worries that he could be linked to adult website profile. So do what so what is what is what does Trump's team do about something like that? Do they just disavow because now that he's gay, is he disavowed? Um, they try to bury it basically. But yeah, two thousand eight or him. Uh, no, not like they won't kill him. Like they, only they'll Hillary, try to only story. Hillary Clinton would do yeah, something like to, that. They'll try to bury his story. My point <laughs> is, my point is, he went, uh, like he he went on a full right wing uh, heel turn and was like, I'm anti LGBT, despite the fact that there is like very open <laughs> instances all the way up until like 2016 or something before he like entered uh, politics in the Trumpian era, where he is. Openly pro LGBTQ. How did he have a turn of heart? Maybe he just hates himself. Well, <laughs> that is one of the things, bro, right? Bro, bro, that is the that is the bedrock of this conversation. That is the bedrock of all of these people that are that are that are hoisted up over uh, over other people's shoulders in today's day and age. Generally speaking, they're miserable, bro. All, all of these people are, mi and, and, and by the way, like, I, I feel like sometimes I, <sighs> misery is such a driver of this hatred. Like, if you really trace it back, all of these people are just angry. Yeah. They're just angry. They're miserable yeah, people. Yeah, I think this is, guys, like, the reason why I'm using him is because, like, it's a better example of just, like, someone who's deliberately restructuring their entire output so that they can, like, gain prominence in a specific area. This is not a value that they genuinely believe because, if he was a self-hating in the closet gay man, he wouldn't have had a heel turn in 2016 when he started running as like a MAGA Republican. He would have never had like many instances throughout his life where he is openly putting himself out there and arguing on behalf of gay people. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the Candace Owens difference as well. P can you pull her up? She speaking of which Candace Owens was fucking ringside with PBD at uh at Sugar Sean. Oh, of course. That the they UFC were locking is down all, that whole that whole section. UFC was crazy. is all like there's so many there's so many right wingers like this f ape. Don't you f this dare. Nah, 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 nah. No, nah, I love Bradley. You, uh, Are you kidding nah, me? Nah, dude, you're not just gonna say no. You 
people to, to switch it. You can't switch no, it. No, no, oh, no. You I, actually do. No, I do. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, I, okay. I talk to him all the time. Oh, you scared the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, no. Because I was, dude, Bradley's my no. guy. No. Dude. No. Bradley's a been, nice guy, he dude. He sat right oh, okay, there okay, many okay. times. Okay, okay. You scared me because no. when you say you love because, me, first of all, like first you of all. say you love me sometimes, and now I don't know what to believe. No, are no, no, not, no, no, are you no, no. not I, I, love, I love Bradley in the same way that I love you, not like <laughs> yeah, Patrick okay. Bad David, who I enjoy as like an entertaining figure. Value uh, but value but yeah, as a value tanning figure, um, it's it's def it's definitely different than uh than than that okay no, I, yeah, he's, Bradley had great seats. I was yeah. in the bleeds, bro. I was in the yeah. nosebleeds, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sean cooked you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, no. Wait, what? The, why was I bringing I up Bradley? To, oh, I just as a as a meme, I was bringing him up. I wanted to get. I want to go back to Candace because I think oh, that yeah, could Candace. be our first conspiracy. Like, let's let's dive into this. Is is the yeah, prime see? minister Macron's wife a a, a, a man? Hey, there you go. Oh, there we, he actually is. We interviewed him. Uh, this was a wonderful interview about uh his like body dysmorphia and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, when are you gonna get to a UFC event ringside, bro? I can't because I'm too woke and too gay and too. <laughs> You'll have to sit good. with me in the bleach. Yeah, I will be outside in the yeah. ceiling with me. That's and why you're in the bleachers, bro. <laughs> you said shit about like, uh, <laughs> but Brian Garcia maybe not actually finding the truth about like pedophilic elite. See, the problem with that. All right, are we go? Is this? Are we, we going? We can talk about Ryan in a second. Let's start we can with talk it. about Ryan. Let's yeah. start with it. The problem with that. Dude, are you gonna Are you gonna give any context? Yes. Uh, the, the, I'm sure they're aware. But over the past two weeks, Ryan Garcia, uh, a a a actual boxer and influencer, um, by way of the number of people that he reaches, has made a number of very very high profile and shocking claims about things that he uh, about things he has seen and information about the elites that he has access to. Yeah. Some of which is true, by the way. But not so, not but for some, him, no, but yeah. some of the stuff. Well, sorry, he didn't see it personally. But, oh, well, but some of the things. By the way, saying, by the way, like, are, are we? Do we feel comfortable, me, you, and Chat, right now, to to go forward the rest of the episode and say that Ryan Garcia was not at Bohemian Grove? He <laughs> yes. does not know who murdered Tupac. He was not brought into a blood blood oath at the Vatican. He are we comfortable saying that? Like, yes. should we say? I don't believe that they tied him down and made him forcibly watch C Sam uh, like or or CP uh, in the way that he claimed. Right. So at, uh, at Bohemian Grove. At, at Bohemian at Grove. At Bohemian Grove. Uh, so you're saying maybe somewhere else. Like I got a Burger know, King. I don't know because because I don't know if he has dealt with with trauma like that in his life. I don't know that. But but the 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 the, the place I have been at since day one. By the way, the same Ryan Garcia that came on our show it was a, has been a flat earther for years, has been very susceptible to those type of theories. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I saw this start happening, just after after this tank loss and pre this this Devin Haney fight, it, I, it was so apparent to me immediately that there was a breakdown in progress, either a breakdown or a ploy to sell the fight. So I immediately said, you know what? The reason I don't like this is this is going to be another incendiary rocket fuel device for this community to latch onto and yeah. say, okay, we've got another one. Yeah. Okay, we've got another proponent for this absolute fucking bullshit. Now, to your point, Bohe Bohemian Grove, does it exist? Bohemian yes, Grove, it does. It's it does, a real but, no, but it's not. But it's not what they what conservatives make it out to be. How about this? There is no proof that it is what conservatives make it out to be. No. There's not even any reason to believe. No, no, no. We we know what it is. Richard Nixon, very famous wiretapper who wiretapped himself uh, all, all the it. time, yeah. talked about what it actually was in in very clear terms. Uh, and it's kind of funny to think about in, with today's eyes, but. He is right. That is exactly what Bohemian Grove is. It's Can like we a country. Say what he called it. No the word, exact word. We can't say it, but it, it's a. <laughs> he said it's a. It's a country club for old men to do gay shit. Right. Basically, right, right, right. Which he's right. Um, it's a. It's a boys' club for uh, like elites, uh, both from the liberal side and the and the conservative Republican side. Oh, to don't go say and, that. You're gonna scare a whole bunch and, of people who think it's all one side. Bro. Yeah, no, it, but like that's what it is. It's just like celebrities and and artists and like uh, you know uh, elderly statesmen that go there and do some gay shit, right? Um, and it still exists to this day. I've literally, I know people that have worked there as like really, yeah. I've know people that have worked there that became journalists afterwards, but like uh, worked there as waiters at the time. It's so funny that like. People think that our elites have to like do weird like blood oath rituals at some f 
country club and aren't openly discussing your demise in broad daylight at <laughs> Davos, like literally being like, okay, well, we need to kill 10% of poor people instead of 15% this year because the poor are getting out of control. You know, like they openly say it. They're not doing it on a camping trip. The yeah, boys they're not, they don't have to do it with like weird blood well, rituals. Well, well, on the blood ritual side, they have a very infamous play there called the uh, Cremation of Care, which is a, which is a strange, uh, uh, dark, uh, you know, weird ritualistic play that they do there. That is very similar to plays that you can see on Broadway or yeah. movies like Midsummer or or anything that's in that type of fictional realm. Now th that that them doing that play has acted as the only evidence that these conspiracy theorists need to prove that this type of stuff is going yeah, and on. They act like it's a real baby too, like which is insane. Like that's in anyway. Well, no, but you can't, but I know. So, so okay. So, he, so what you just did with the Eno anyway, that is, that is the direction we can take. We can take that direction. We can say, yo, you know what? These people are crazy. Like, let's be honest. And they hate when you say that they hate when that you, when you say it, they're like, oh, you're just going to try to discredit me by calling me crazy. Yeah. That's what I am going to do. Because you're, 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 you're acting in the shit you are saying is insane. Yeah. Normally that guy in, in, you know, in the previous iterations of that guy existed atop of a soapbox at the metro station and you could smell that guy and you could visualize what that guy looked like and you could tell that that guy was not mentally all there and you could avoid listening to what he has to say and and treat it with anything uh but like uh, background noise right right but now on the internet there are millions of that guy and also they all have blue check marks and all of the other nuances that would allow you to suss out who this person is that you're talking to is now completely gone because everyone can present themselves as like a reasonable orator online. And especially when there's like thousands of other versions of that guy liking that guy, validating what he's Group saying. Think. Group think. You all of a sudden go, maybe that guy's saying some some real shit. Well, What's going and, on? And, and like and like by the way, there's there's a bunch of reinforcing factors at play. One of them is, yo, the government is lying. The yes. government is so so yes. so that level of distrust yes. is 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 a meaningful piece of the puzzle, right? Uh, 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 that that needs that needs to be considered, right? Yes. There is sex trafficking going on. Yes. There is predatory behavior going on. Yes. By by very rich, powerful people. But guess what? It's also being done by soccer coaches in Alabama. It's also being done like like you know what I'm saying. It's also being done by HVAC workers. Yeah. This idea that there's this villainized ultra elite, and there's the only people that are powerfully preying on people and getting away with it is ridiculous. Yeah. It's insane. And then another reinforcing factor that has been used. And that Ryan used very powerfully Catholic is Church. religion. He bookended every one of his statements with, we do this for Jesus. Oh, as yeah, yeah, soon yeah. As you, as soon as you bring that into the conversation, he, he, would, he, would, he would bring forward a conspiracy. He would then cite a Bible verse. Kind of that too. As soon as you do that, it, it, is, it, is, it would be illegitimate for, a, for a, uh, a Christian to then argue your point. Because it's rooted in a Bible verse. So if it's yeah. rooted in a Bible verse, then everything that prefaced it needs to be true as well. So that was his game plan for the past two weeks. And he was called out by Wade Plem, uh, who's, a, who's a boxing commentator and, and, and person on the internet, internet personality, and said, dude, what you are doing by bookending this in, 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 in Christianity is such a disservice to the Christian religion, to, to all the Christians yeah. out there. And, and, and to anyone who's religious, like, like, it, it 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 just has been a really a really weird week just watching it all go down and I got I got really tied into it by by way of Twitter Spaces and trying because because listen that plays a big role too by the way like uh, times of uncertainty that genuinely uh, shift people's attitudes or, or genuinely impact people's lives in very meaningful ways that the government refuses to give clear cut definitional answers on like nine eleven. JFK assassination for sure things that we will never know what the full truth of the matter was aliens um, cause well I yeah I don't that's a much okay. more convoluted theory but um like those are instances even COVID like lockdowns during COVID I think like created a uh, a, a sense of isolation and despair that people wanted answers for so when you don't have a uh firmly rooted in facts based analysis on that 
you are infinitely more susceptible to holistic, Distrust. spiritual, oh, 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 perfectly, sorry, yeah. perfectly tied together arguments. Like it's not, um, I'm not using the word materialist analysis because I don't think it's a, it, it, it is a, a good argumentation here. Like to use that word. It's just that the world is, is world is certainly run by rich people for sure. But the reality of the matter is that they are motivated by self-interest. They're motivated by wanting to make more money. Right. But a lot of people recognize that, but can't put that into like certain terms. So they go, there has to be additional motivations there. Maybe they just want to control us. For what reason? I don't know. Just because they're evil. Like people want good and evil uh, to be a, a perfectly bow-wrapped uh, argument. Uh, and, and when you do that, when you seek out evil as the, as the center of why people do the things that they do, and you don't look for like additional rationale behind the motivations that people have, which ultimately always revolve around making more money, right? Hey, you're talking about nuance right now. You're yeah. scaring, you're, you're blowing people's minds right now. No, no one, but no this, one's, is this, is not, this is something I talk about all the time. Rich, evil, rich, evil, rich, evil. The nuance, bro, you're not going to, unless, unless one of those ultra rich is willing to parrot one of those points, because that's how you go from the fact that, you know, Bill Gates is the most evil person on the planet, but Elon Musk, but sorry, Mark Zuckerberg as well, but Elon Musk is the savior. Yeah, I is hate, the savior see, sent for down me, from the gods. For me, I have a very, much better understanding of the situation, I think, because I think all of them are evil, okay? In you, many different ways. Do you believe ways. there has to be some level of evil to be involved in becoming a billionaire? I think that you have to be kind of uh, bad enough to, to refuse to reckon with uh, the steps that it took for you to get to that position. Because I, I think that like the existence of billionaires from where I'm standing, the way I understand the world and how it should operate, the existence of billionaires is a policy failure akin to the existence of a single homeless person. Homeless people are homeless due to policy failures because we did not do that. We did not take the necessary steps to help these people to well, save policy, these people. Po policy failures based on a based on a different uh societal construct than the one that we exist in because cuz yeah. in a capitalistic society yeah. it's, it's a proof point for success versus failure. Yeah, Do you know but what also I'm but like, also because like it it's uh I mean you can look to examples even in other capitalist nations as to how they've solved this issue like uh you know uh, Helsinki comes to mind or or Vienna or Vienna, was or Vienna comes to mind like places that they've like basically dealt with this issue Caps. despite being capitalist dealt with this issue by ba by creating a housing first policy where the first step in uh in in recovery is to ensure that you have permanent shelter right like you are eliminating one of the major reasons as to why people find themselves in the throes of of a uh, deep drug addiction to begin with right because you're self-medicating, because you don't have the... You're hopeless. Yeah, you're, you're hopeless. hopeless. You don't have shelter. Like, this is something that animals need. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, not just humans, but, like, you, a bear needs shelter in the would wild say, to brave the elements. Would you people would be more willing to provide shelter for a for a stray dog than they would for a homeless person right yes. now? Um, yes, because I think, that, I, I think that the prosperity gospel that many Americans deep down intrinsically believe uh, dictates that uh, poverty is a moral failure. A lot of people, I think, uh, approach it, even if they don't say it in those terms, if you were to address that, if you were to like ask them directly, they'd be like, of course not. But they do believe it because that is like I a wonder, lot of people. I wonder what the percentage breakdown is because because I think like, a lot of people do see like, it as like a moral failing. I was not raised like that. I was not raised like that. And, and, I, and I think a lot of the issues at the end of the day, a lot of the issues that we're seeing in this country and, and with everything we're seeing in this world right now is a parental failure. Parental failure is is a is a is a not talked about enough topic in this world. I was not raised like that. If I see someone freezing to death on the side of the road in January, my thought is not, "Wow, this person just didn't do well enough." Honey, get a look at this asshole. No, no, that's, no. That, that, that's not that's not, not the modus operandi of like the average person who also will implement or advocate for policies that kill homeless people anyway. Though they also don't think about it like on those terms. They don't go these people no not f 
these people, but that they, that, but that there was something that they didn't do that was a that was a requirement for them to deserve shelter. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, if no. I, that, yeah. that's that's insane to me. Like, yeah. I, I, like if I see somebody that 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 like, here's the thing, dude. Go 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 show someone like that and and really gauge the reaction. That that shit burns me. It yeah. Burns my heart and my soul to see people like that. Yeah. And 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 to see the reaction of people that are on the flip side that don't have the empathetic build out that that people like I, that I was given by my parents, thank God, and that I should be thanking God for every day, disturbs me. And I don't know how you fix that. How do you fix that? How do you well, take it's someone? A, it's a, it's yo, a, stop, stop telling your waiter to fuck off. Like, bring me my water. I posted. Yeah. I posted a. a it, it's it's systemic. It, th that's sorry. what I'm trying to say. It's a it's a systemic failure because of the the like the way that we view capitalism as like the perfect design structure, and there's no alternative to it whatsoever. Obviously, I'm biased in a different direction, but even beyond that, I think like most average people would recognize that it, there there are genuine severe issues in the in the economic organization that we exist under so what i was simply trying to say is that um the media for example operates in a way where they also play the role of vilifying homeless people by constantly talking about like crime crime panic homeless people are doing crimes they're all criminals crime crime we have to deal with them through deterrence mechanisms and and not by like seeing uh a lot of uh of of the the many invisible homes, as I like to call it, as a as a byproduct of like being priced out of the housing market, which is why they are homeless to begin with. Uh, but instead, as like people who are just drug addicts, and 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 that's also bad. If you're a drug addict, you're like you're not sick. Uh, you're you made a bad choice. You you, you, you made, made a bad, a bad choice. choice. You personally made a bad choice. Yeah. You should be punished for it. Right. And it's it's very draconian. And this is all a byproduct of like carefully manufactured narratives that we have pushed over and over again for a century. America, in many ways, was a proto-capitalist nation, uh, pre-industrial revolution. Like, it, America always was destined to be this, like, small business owner-backed um, capitalist country that treats the Constitution as his Bible. Like, not even, not even, like, a real Christian religion or anything like that, but one that is a capitalist religion with constitution being its Bible. Um, because, because of all of that, because of centuries of like this kind of uh, reinforcement mechanism, this kind of propaganda, people have developed, they've learned these positions and, and take it for granted as though it is like objectively the truth and even moral, right? They don't even think about it. And I think that's why a lot of people online, for example, Turn around and think you're being actually fake and a grifter, or I'm being fake and a grifter. When I, I get say that all the time. no, all the homeless time. people shouldn't <laughs> die. We should house them. Like when I say that, people are like, "You could not have arrived at this position because of your own moral compass, because it's impossible for me to see it that way." So you are probably grifting. But you have to. But you have to slightly. You have to slightly feel for that position as well. You know what I'm saying? Not feel. Not. 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 Not you know, be sympathetic for them, but be empathetic. I, I, w I will tell you, I have, I have been around over my years on this planet. Some people that think about life very differently than the way I think about life. And I, and I am horrified by that and deep, deep down horrified by the way people treat other people on this planet. It, it, it is, it is disturbing. Dude, do you know, if I, if maybe this makes me soft, sensitive, fake, whatever. If I say something to someone that I believe or do something to someone that I believe has had a negative impact on their day, even a 10% negative impact, I will think about that for the next 48 hours. I, why did I do that? Why the, f like, bro, I didn't sleep last night because I flipped that table over yesterday. I didn't sleep last night because yeah. I was like, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. Now Jeff is going to, now J Jeff is impacted and Ryan's impacted and all this stuff. 
maybe that's a character flaw of mine, but I like to put other people first. No, but I, I like to consider other people's I think it comes from feelings a, when I can when I consider my no, own but, but pursuits. But that comes in from life. that comes from your own personal lived experiences of like being in the literal depths of society, like being 100%. in the worst rung of society. That's where that came from, and a lot of people don't have those experiences. And I mean, it's kind of a good thing that a lot of people don't. I don't know if it is. I, I maybe you give, maybe you show people what it's like to be hopeless, to have nothing, to wait in twenty-six degree weather in the line for a methadone clinic because you're sick to your stomach, you're throwing up all over yourself, your family has written you off, you have felony court cases stacked against you, and your life is hopeless. You have nowhere to go except for a friend's couch in a basement where there's drugs everywhere, there's guns, there's violence. That is a, a very sad and real truth for a lot of people in this country. And by the way, God bless all the people that make it out of that that place in life because I guarantee you or I bet you at least they have the same empathy that I have for others in that position because without going through that shit you will never understand what it is like to have no hope to have no feeling that things are ever going to get better in this life for you and to give up or to almost give up and God literally God bless those people I would never trade that experience for my life ever yeah well I, what I was trying to say is like you are the person that you are because of those experiences and many people that still have like uh, grievances that we mentioned, like even the fortunate people that have grievances still have a lot of underlying resentment and anger. And when there's no when there's no real answers to that, because God knows, like liberal media is not offering them why this shit sucks, because they are beholden to the same corporate masters that everyone else is beholden to. So their job is to basically say, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, no, inflation is going down. Like there is a soft landing. Shut the fuck up. Like, you know, I don't care about your financial struggles. And again, fortunate people are experiencing that. Right. Uh, it makes people go crazy. They're like, well, what the fuck? These guys are lying to me. Right. Why would I ever trust them ever again? And I, I don't think, uh, I don't think those in positions of power understand the impact that that is having in the public consciousness. Like, because if your own personal experiences is not matching what, like, these organs, these supposedly unbiased uh, organs of truth are, are telling you how you should feel, right. then you're going to be like, well, what the fuck? Fuck this. I'm going to go find someone who actually does present themselves as personable, who actually does present themselves as likable, who's going to uh, agree with some of my biases, and then maybe reinforce those biases. And that's how you arrive and at that's like what, that's what we're this seeing. independent media cycle of just like constantly presenting yourself. Like I know so many of these motherfuckers Fox News that got vaccinated, but and and so many of these motherfuckers in uh, independent media in like in in right wing broadcasting that got vaccinated while still simultaneously pushing the narrative that like these will kill you and 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 pushing the narrative that you Hassan or me sold your soul yeah you're a faker you're a grifter this this desire to take down other people who have an empathetic viewpoint or a centrist viewpoint to 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 pedestal these people who have actually sold their souls yeah literally sold it. the people that are saying other people sold their souls that's projection that 100%. is projection yeah bro. no it's reactionary they are the thinking. ones that have sold their souls more than anybody if you are if you are further dividing this country and this world by utilizing un non-fact-based evidence to provide a one-sided argument to divide and and drive hatred on one side and further cause problems you have sold your soul it's not the people that are asking hey what can i take from your side what can i yeah, say but, from your but side? the problem is like, they'll say that about, about you and myself too though that's the problem like people will say well you're doing that you're being divisive i think uh, there is also an additional thing that we have to talk about here, which is that like, that's why I'm very radically honest about my, my biases, right? Like I, oh, I will openly tell you, like, this is what I believe. This is what I what think is, is right. one of those. Um, I mean, give me any issue well, and I, I will tell you. Well, I mean, I listened to the conversation on Gaza. I've not, I've, I, I have been one of the, I have not, I have not spoken out at length about the situation in Gaza. I, do, nor do I have the platform, you know, I have a followership. Do I have a long form platform that 
that lends itself to that conversation. Am I, is that an excuse? Maybe, right? But have I have I spoken at length about it? No, I haven't. And I, you know, I've seen you talk about it. It's a very important conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. And and I also feel like there is a le- there is got to be some level of nuance there. Like, okay, for example, let like, me ask you, let me ask you this question. What what was the proper what was the proper reaction to October 7th? I think well, the way I reacted to it, I think is the proper way to react to it, which is to acknowledge that the atrocities at hand were a direct consequence of a do you know what an apartheid is? Yeah, like apartheid South yeah, Africa? Yeah. Apartheid yeah, okay. So yeah, a direct consequence of of uh the the Israeli apartheid regime upon millions of Palestinians, uh, which features death, displacement, and destruction for, for them sure. for 75 years. Like my my position was that like a resistance to that or reaction to that is always going to be imperfect and it's always going to be very violent because the standard of that violence is set by the occupation, by the occupying entity. Um, this does not mean that uh, I believe that like everyone in Israel deserves to die or even those uh, the, the civilians were, were deserving of the, the death that uh, they experienced. Of course not. Um, but yet, if you want to avoid conflict of similar uh, proportions in the future, like you have to put an end to the much larger, much more consequential uh, uh, death and destruction that uh, the the Israeli state has brought upon the Palestinian population. Isn't it, isn't it crazy that there there actually is like a a rule book for this stuff? Like how wild is that? Like that 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 that's like almost like definitive enough of the place we're at as a world and have been for a couple hundred years now yeah. like that there is a geneva convention driven rule book as to what is an is a uh adequate or acceptable loss of life in a civilian population as a result of a military tactic so basically basically it, it, israel has been able to to some extent justify their actions by way of presenting a tactical military operation or tactical military goal and presenting the loss of life attached to that as a as a, an acceptable loss of life based on Geneva Convention. Yeah, but but it's but the problem is like they they haven't and that's why right, like right. there's now more people that are like no that's no, no, and it seems and it seems like the the conversation is happening right now. Like yeah. it seems like it seems like the 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 wave of conversation is happening now, and it's and it's in a good it's in a good way. And people have realized that this is that there's a lot of f-ed up shit that needs to be that attention needs to be paid to it. But like I'm the just point- going back to how, how this conversation started and and your stance on it. I, I was I was trying to draw some biased stances, but I think your stance on this one is 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 probably the stance that pretty much everyone has at this point. But, but it's still so biased, maybe it wasn't the- and it's a stance that I've held for from the beginning for since the ten beginning, years. 100%. Like I, this is something that I've been talking about because like I understand that October seven is not like when history started, but many people desperately try to make it seem like this was the first shot. The first shot was the Palestinians, when in fact. Obviously, activists and and those and Palestinian people in general and and those who pay attention to these sorts of things knew that, for example, there was a Euromed report that came out on October 6th that's, that correctly stated that 2023 was the deadliest year for Palestinian children. How did that happen? That was because of the daily maintenance of this apartheid. The apartheid state requires a tremendous amount of violence for its daily maintenance. You might not think about it, especially when we're in America, the media might not cover it, but that reality is constant for those people who are withstanding it, for those people who are experiencing it, for those people who are living under the illegal, by the way, international law uh, dictates that Israel's occupation in the West Bank and, and parts of Jerusalem is illegal. Like, no one will argue against that, for the record. Israel will say, oh, we have to do it. But everybody understands that it is, it is completely illegal. Um, and, and it's not like a matter of opinion. It's just straight up illegal. And Israel has been doing it because America gives it permission to do it. And, and, and the thing is, like, there is um, the, the way that they've been able to get away with it is by uh, deliberate lobbying efforts 
by APAC and and uh, because Israel from its inception has been a very important military uh, forward operating That's base it, yeah. for the for the American interests in the region. This is a resource rich region. Uh, and we always wanted to ensure that we have some level of control over that region, a, a destabilizing factor in that region. But we have, but we have FOB, you know, uh, oh, it's a little autonomous bit different it's a from a, a, aside from 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 Israel, right? Like, like, and and another question I have is, yeah, but those bases you, come and go, and those bases are beholden to like policy separate and embargo separate countries like turkey is the closest you can arrive at that with respect to like being a nato nation saudi. but um but, but saudi arabia is a client state right like saudi arabia still can take actions uh, that are against american interests and sometimes they do by, by, by the way like by the 9 way, 11 <laughs> by the way i'm 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 privy to th this information like i, I there you're there you'll oh Hassan, you will are what much more well studied than me I'm, i have a much broader broader um scope than 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 this topic which obviously is is the most important topic that we face currently right um but the other issue that i've had is is just from a human standpoint like like i have i'm i've i'm friends with people on both sides i have very as you know i have very very close not just jewish friends israeli friends like i'm friends with i actually am friends with people who have affected family members from october 7th and so so it has been a. It has been a. Uh, what, what is both sides? What did I? You can't say that. What is that mean? a thing? They keep saying both sides. Are you not? Am I not supposed to say that? No, no, no. There, <laughs> it's a meme. Okay. Uh, they they no, put the oh, five yeah. head. They say like because centrism. No, but but like yeah, I know. Here I go again. But but um, but like my my friend Todd, for example, is 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 an Israeli. His his parents are both Israeli, and it's just it it it. No matter how you want to cut it, it's just a it's just a fucked up situation. It's a fucked up situation that it needs attention. You don't just drop the ball and call it a up situation. But but let's let's be clear. There has been as a result of it, and and maybe you say rightly so. I don't know, but there has been an a, an uptick in people that I love who are very good people, good humans who, by the way, probably disagree with the actions of Netanyahu and the Israeli government mm -hmm. getting hatred. You know what I'm saying, and and and, and having their well, lives impact as a result of it. Now, is that is that a, is there any comparison between their struggles of having words thrown at them to to what Gazans or uh, yeah, Palestinians are going? Of course yeah. not. Yeah. Of course not. That's not what I'm saying. But it's just overall the whole situation sucks, and 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 especially as we sit in a, especially as we sit here in the comforts of an occupying nation ourselves. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, no, no, no. You I, know I what I'm saying? Like, we we killed to take this land. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, like, it's just exactly. a really, it's just a really. So the question is this: fucked up when we were, scenario. The question is this: when we were killing to take this land, which side would you find yourself on? Is the real question, and I think a lot of people are like, no, I'd be on the side of the killers. Like, that's the difference. Wait, wait, wait. We'll say that one more time. The question is: there have been moments throughout history that we look back at. And people fantasize about being on the right side. The Holocaust the has got to be number one. The, the Holocaust is number slavery. one. Like if I saw Holocaust. it happening, I would step in and I would make yeah. noise and I would, yeah, for sure, for and, sure. And the reality of the matter is, many people are are demonstrating that they, while they fancy themselves to be on the right side, that the, while they fantasize about potentially being on the right side of history, they actually would not. Be. What can we do? Wait, hold what, on. What could, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. One sec. Okay. Uh, I'll just play with the dog. What, here, what's, you can just grab it out. Of what? No, no. I'm. In, I was in a rush. What's, what's been, the, what's been the, the current latest on ceasefire? Where, um, where are we at right now? I mean, now? there's a, there's a back and forth between uh, Hamas officials and like the, the Qatari and Egyptian emissaries, like the, the envoys in between, with the Israeli government. But uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has uh, a, an interest in maintaining the, the genocidal. Uh, like actions specifically so that he can uh he's very unpopular in israel right now and also even before october 7 he had a court case uh that uh was you know th that constantly was like being uh held up uh about corruption okay so he's basically trying to in a very self-interested way uh trying to continue the the bombings because it is very popular the bombings are very popular in israel um like uh, it's the, i mean there there are uh studies on this for sure but um 
But but indiscriminate bombings? Well, like like the bombing campaigns are are all deliberate. They are they are not indiscriminate. It looks indiscriminate, uh, uh, but it, it's not indiscriminate. It's actually very deliberately bombing civilians. Like this is not my assessment of the situation alone. I'm not just like coming to this conclusion by myself. Uh, I'm not even just coming to this conclusion by looking at the casualty numbers of it being 25,000 plus women and children in a sea of, of uh, uh, Palestinian civilians that have been killed. But um, there are, there are, are uh, different military doctrines that Israel has uh, historically utilized. This is open public uh, record. Yeah, uh, the Hia doctrine is one of them, which uh, is is uh, the the uh, Israeli military doctrine that like civilian targets uh, are are certainly uh, in the realm of possibility when they are engaging with like any enemy combatants uh, in an in an attempt to demoralize uh, the entirety of the population that they are uh, that they're fighting. Which, against. which obviously that's not an Israeli built tactic. That's a no, tactic is. as old. No, 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 but I'm saying that's an, oh, uh, well, you're uh, not wrong. Shock and awe is, you know what I'm saying? We that's call great, shock and awe, shock and awe for a that's reason. A, that's you know a great take. You're like, actually right. The Dahia doctrine is actually, uh, first implemented, I believe in North Korea. So it is, uh, a, a direct, this doctrine in and of itself is actually in direct violation of the Geneva conventions which we literally did implement after World War II specifically because of the bombing of Dresden and the firebombing of Tokyo yep, and yep, all these like yep. civilian dense areas, as a matter of fact. Um, so we set these rules and we didn't actually follow them ever in, in any of like America's military history. But, um, but so this has been a longstanding military principle in Israel, right? Uh, this has always been a longstanding military principle uh, there's there's a little bit of back and forth, like, is this permissible, is this not? But ultimately, it is something that they've been doing time and time again, that they've done time and time again in, in multiple uh, sieges that have happened upon Gaza that they call mowing the lawn, like Israeli officials have called mowing the lawn, which is genocidal rhetoric, but I won't even get into that. And And last but not least, there are still you know, a lot of investigative reporters in Israel that are Israeli investigative reporters that have uncovered uh, the latest one being the 972 magazine. They're great. Uh, showing all of the details in which uh, is like what tactics Israel applies when targeting uh, buildings in Gaza. They call them power targets. And I'll show you the the article real quickly and and basically summarize it for you. But uh, it's 972 Magazine. It's an Israeli magazine uh, uh, that, that titled this article is by Yuval Abraham, uh, A Mass Assassination Factory Inside of Israel's Calculated Bombing of Gaza. Permissive airstrikes on non-military targets and the use of an artificial intelligence system have enabled the Israeli army to carry out its deadliest war on Gaza. This came out on November 30th. Okay, even before then, if you had uh, paid attention, if anyone had paid attention to like and, and knew the uh, Dahia doctrine, you would know that this is like perfectly normal. And this is definitely something that Israel has done before. But this time it was a little bit different. It was even more brutal than previous incursions. Um, after all, the, the October 8th military operation into Gaza started with the defense minister, Yoel, uh, Yoav Gallant, openly stating that they were fighting human animals that did not deserve to get food, electricity, and water. So they very openly started uh, the, the military operations by stating that they were shutting off the electricity in the Gaza Strip, shutting off the water in the Gaza Strip, and shutting off food into the Gaza Strip. Israel has since then consistently held back aid humanitarian aid convoys that are waiting at the Rafah border in and Egypt. That, that is a, and that also is a war crime. All of these are yeah, every yeah. every aspect. But of, and, and what and they and keep in mind, like I said, learning here that that is that is all denied by the Israeli government that that's the case that that halting no, of no. those supplies it, it, is they they don't really deny it either. They say that it's uh, it's righteous. Uh, it depends. Well, no, um, but regard righteous or not, if it if it constitutes like like Geneva is very definitive and it's in its you know listing of what constitutes to be a war crime or not so regardless of your righteousness that that doesn't 
have a play. So so what? So I guess I guess bring it full circle full circle back to now. Like what it, what is the current what is the current standing right now as as far as it pertains to international courts of justice and the international ongoing, court of justice. The, the area. international court of justice is currently uh, and it's going to take years. It where is, is that? Currently where are going they doing the it in Spain or something like that? Where was the? Where were they? Uh, Netherlands. I thought there was one in Spain too. I could be wrong, but okay, go ahead. Um, it's it's in the, in the Hague. Uh, so, okay, okay. Would it surprise you if I were to tell you that the American government actually pushed a bill after nine eleven called uh, the cleverly titled as the invasion of the Hague Act that dictates that if any American service member or American citizen has ever tried for war crimes under the uh, international jurisdiction of the uh, the uh, the uh, international criminal courts that America has full authorization to invade this foreign nation, the Netherlands, the Hague. So if they don't like how the court case is going, they could just come. No, in no, no, there. no, no extradition whatsoever. Not even like a court case. Uh, and, and how the court case is going. If you extradite our allies as well, or any like direct active, uh, active duty service members, we pass the bill amongst ourselves that we can go and invade a foreign nation that is conducting this. 2002 Supplement of Appropriations Act for further recovery from the persons and uh, terrorist attacks in the United States. Wait, is this the one? Hold on here. I'll show you the, the I think this is the one, right? Or I don't know if <laughs> there's a couple different ones, but here, oh, it's the American Service Members Protection Act. Exactly. This is the one. This is the official name of it. Ugh. The American Service Members Protection Act, also known informally as the Hague Invasion Act, is a United States federal law described as a bill to protect the United States military personnel and other elected and appointed officials of the United States government against criminal prosecution by an international criminal court to which the United States is not party. The text of the act has been codified as subchapter two. Uh, the act gives the president power to use all means necessary and appropriate to bring about the release of any U.S. or allied personnel being detained or imprisoned by, on behalf of, or at the request of the International Court. Oh, so Criminal it's like a Court. presidential pardon for Kodak Black, but for war criminals. Well, it's not even a presidential pardon. It's more so if you try fuck around and find out. If you try to, like, prosecute uh, any American or ally for war crimes that we think are not crimes, uh, even if they are literally war crimes, we will invade you. With the full might of the American military, Mr. Now, Berger, Mr. Bergerelli doesn't like that very much. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Do you do you think that this is like good guy talk in in the simplest, most reductive terms? I mean, bro, I grew up. Listen, I grew up fucking uh, uh, blessed to be on the winning side of all this shit. So I, I mean, I'm happy that we're having this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, it's not it's not like news to me. I'm not I'm not surprised by any of this shit. The U.S. is always, you know, like. But yeah, I, my question is, listen, what do we do beyond continue to drive awareness for? Right. Like, I mean, yeah, I can't fucking arm Palestinians. You know what I mean? Like, it's well, illegal. I mean, it's like <laughs> but um, even though uh, the the charities that I've uh, worked with, uh, people will claim are, you know, working with Hamas or whatever, which they're not. Right. Um, but the only thing we can do at this stage from the United States of America is basically not only bring awareness to the atrocities because for this is for the first time ever, like a person like you had never been privy to what's going on. Um, for the most part. Or only you know, heard like, about it. There would be there would be there's been eruptions of, of Gaza, you know, yes, violence but, for a long time. I this is clearly like the the, the, the biggest, biggest it's one. ever gotten. Except, correct. Except correct. for for look, as someone who's been covering this for ten years, like publicly, right? Um, I will tell you this much. There's never been this much public support openly. For sure. Because every single instance in the past, every single instance in the past, people would just simply say, fuck that, you're anti-Semitic. Israel has to be a Jewish state. Israel, ha which is an ethno state, by the way, which, you know, fundamentally flawed. But um, it has to be uh, a, a Jewish state. And the Arabs are anti-Semitic in, in their interest in, like, not being bombed by Israel and not being constantly living under, like, military rule in an illegal occupation of Israel. And if you ever call that out, if you ever say that that's fucking wrong, you're anti-Semitic, right? And that, understandably, especially in progressive circles, was like, well, what the fuck? I don't want to come across is as he, an anti-Semite. This it, guy's a progressive. I trust him. He's a wonderful, kind individual. So... 
I am not going to look further into it. <laughs> is it true that we that there is some progress being made in the short term just before October seventh between no. Well, because because MBS had MBS had been making some level of at least sentimental movements with head of banking from the Israeli government in Saudi Arabia to try to drive better relationships between Jews and Arabs. No. That's a MBS is a, a fraudulent piece of shit and a monster for the record. Mohammed bin Salman is uh, responsible for a genocide in Yemen for the record. So it's like well, I'm responsible for spilling water all over. So MBS is not like a. Is like a no, but, but no. Guy. Well, hold on a second. Dialing it back from from all of that, was he not? Were were conversations not taking place between uh, Israelis and Arabs from the Saudi side to try to drive some level of work between the two? R remember, um, the parties. Arabs from the Saudi side do not have the interest of the Palestinian population at heart. Palestinians know this, and Palestinians will openly say this. Saudi Arabia, just like you uh, previously mentioned, is a client state, Got it. which means that they don't give a fuck about the the uh, Palestinians or their plight at all, and and famously they don't actually care about the Palestinian plight at all. The government, I mean, the the kingdom does not. I the people I, do. The Arabs that live in these Gulf states do, which is why the Abraham Accords were like significant, but. Um, what what has been presented to you is actually a normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel, not a normalization of between Israel Arab, and Palestinians or or Arab people in general. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> by the way, when I say Israel is an apartheid state akin to South Africa, that's not my that's not only my personal assessment of the situation, but that is actually. Objective reality, according to B'Tselem, which is an Israeli human rights organization, that is the objective reality according to Amnesty International, which is a non-government organization, and that is objective reality according to uh, a, a Human Rights Watch as well. So, like, this is not a, this is not really like a contested fact. I would say, unless you're talking to someone who is either A, completely oblivious to the realities, or B, very clearly biased towards uh, Israel and trying to muddy the waters. But yeah, uh, this is important as well. This chatter is correct. This is not a conflict between Arabs and Jews in the way that is like the way that Israel has presented it, but that is not the case. Right. This is a conflict between the Israeli apartheid regime and the Palestinian people that have to live under the Israeli apartheid regime and the surrounding Arab regions for uh, their own personal interests can, you know, maintain uh, good relations with one side over the other. But ultimately, uh, everyone is self-interested. And I think that the Palestinians deserve emancipation like they it is their right. It is well within their right. It is also well within the international law that they uh, can engage in a means of armed resistance against an occupying force. So like while October 7 does have it, it featured its great share of atrocities in the form of civilians being killed, like um, currently when the Israeli occupying force, for example, is like going into Gaza and like doing a, a ground invasion when Palestinians fucking murk them, right. And film that shit. They are well within their legal right to do so. And, you know, then this is, again, not even like a contentious thing. I mean, it's contentious because, like, it's completely beyond the scope of comprehension in America to say such a thing. But, but the Israeli occupying force in its offensive measures in Gaza are actually the ones that are violating international law as a belligerent occupier, like a belligerent not in the sense that, like, they're crazy— Belligerent is in like the old war conflict term, which means like you're one party to the war. As a belligerent occupier, Israel does not have a right to quote unquote defend itself by blowing up Gaza. So technically they are violating in, in the least ambiguous terms, international law, like rules of international uh, uh, conflict. I don't know how you, how you, uh, how you do this for seven hours. I mean, I, I... This is harder than construction. 
to be honest with you. No, like, bro, but I am, bro, I am a very bro, stubborn bro. guy. That's what it is. I think that's like because because my brain, dude. This is how I feel uh, right now. Uh, I'll show you. Watch this guy. This is how I feel right now. Have you ever seen the movie Fantastic Mr. Fox with George Clooney? I don't think so. He's like I the can fox. Pull it up if you want. Yeah, th- I, I feel like this guy. <sighs> He's a, uh, he's like a... Yeah, I do this for nine <laughs> hours. He's what he does, bro. Yeah. But he's like, and George Clooney asked him as a fox, he's like, when you look at me like that, are you, like, is there anything going on out there? Yeah. Dude. But, I mean, you know, not to, not to demean the conversation, but, bro, it's, I think, it's, it's I think just, it's, 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 it's a lot, it's heavy, it needs to be talked about. By all means, um, I'm a very stubborn person. And well, I, I, think, I don't, I don't think so. I think no, you're, I, I, I think you're passionate. I think that you're, that you're interested in, 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 you know, the, the positive outcome of for humanity in the area, and that's, and that's noble. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, do, uh, do we want to get into conspiracy theories, at, like physically and actually? Because I will say this: I do. If you want to anybody in this chat wants to continue this conversation this is so ridiculous i'm at rolling loud this weekend i have a 1010 burger pop up there so if you're if you're switching uh from geopolitical theater conversation to Nicki minaj by any chance today i will see you there and i'm interested in that in uh continuing the conversation okay what, what do you want to are you are you leaving is this your <laughs> no it's no oh. my ass hurts a little bit um you don't by the way you don't have to you you can leave at any moment we've like way we've gone way past uh what you the, thought we were gonna no yeah. but but hassan i want to say this like honestly this is it, it this is like learning experience for me honestly like you you are you are extremely well uh studied on this stuff and i think that there's a lot of people out there that parrot talking points they hate farm the engagement farm on twitter with bullshit uh on you know studied and unresearched topics and you clearly have your research you have your evidence to back up the stuff that you talk about and that's yeah, why you I would like never talking to you. you would never arrive at that unless you were charitable and that's the point because there is a shit ton of stuff out there online in the same way that we talked about like the whole streaming is harder than a real job conversation there are there is an entire cottage industry of people that basically take those like minor moments and make a lot of hay out of that and present me as like someone who is deliberately misinforming people um when in fact i am you know always very careful in in the the information that in i'm a, presenting in a, in a perfect world someone would would tactically call out the in uh the 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 errors or or omissions or um inconsistencies in the facts that you're providing with 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 uh compelling evidence from a from an alternate angle and that would be called a productive debate unfortunately it is not the society we live in we live in the national Enquirer. the president is actually a reptile like that is where we live and so like so like you bro there was a a time and place in this world where scholarly conversation was elevated and people were excited about it and and they were in awe of this wonderful debate and 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 conversation now unfortunately smart people intelligent people are banished because they're boring. They've got too much facts to well, back I mean, it up. I, I try to, is the I try president to make it a reptile or not? No one gives a fuck. Is Michelle Obama a man or not? Yes or no? Answer the question. And if it, and if Michelle Obama's not a man, you're a fucking liberal, bro. Okay, yeah. that's where we're at. That's the stupidity of the world we currently live in. I'm well, sorry. I, I know that, which is why I like try to make it as entertaining and as palatable as possible. Like we're having a serious conversation right now, but like that's why I love conspiracy theories. And that's precisely the reason why I love, like, you know, talking about conspiracy theories, covering conspiracy theorists, and, like, uh, I derive, a, I'm fascinated with it, and I derive a lot of satisfaction from watching that sort of stuff. Well, and even, like, what's, well, where are you drawing the line nowadays, Hassan? That's the thing, like, like, this huge, the, we still haven't gotten to Candace Owens saying the, 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 the Prime Minister of France's uh, wife is actually a man. Now, her, if, if you pulled it up, the evidence that she is using for this, if we even want to quickly dive into it, the evidence that she's using for this is that in her childhood photo, this woman actually uh, uh, is, they say it's her in a picture, but she actually looks more like her brother. 
Holy shit, she looks like her sibling. That's crazy. Holy shit, bro. She uh, she looks like her brother, bro. I, I think you're I think you're scared of the truth. I think she arrived at uh, a, a very valid logical conclusion. And she looks more like her brother than she does herself. So for that reason, she's a man, bro. She's actually a fucking man, dude. So that's one evidence thing. And then the other big evidence, the same one they have on Michelle Obama. We've never seen her pregnant. We've never seen her pregnant. We've never seen Michelle Obama pregnant. How could she be a biological woman if we've never seen her pregnant? You know, it's funny because oh like my God. that same principle exists for their parents. Like you came out of your mother's womb, but you never saw her pregnant. I've never seen any pictures of my mom pregnant. I've never, I have never seen any pictures of Candace Owens' vagina. Well, nowadays it could be, it could be. Is Candace Owens yeah. actually a man? So this is what is called transvestigation for the record. No, what you're, bro. It's one of my bro. favorite. It is one of my favorite oh. conspiracy theories because the conspiracy theory itself is that is rooted within the idea that gender is rigid and binary. But because gender actually in practice... No, in no, 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 no. Don't conflate this. No, 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 Don't no. Don't conflate this. No, no, that's this. where it comes from. That's going to conflate this. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it, no, no. Listen to me. Listen. Keep keep it within the strict gender guidelines that existed in 1950. I don't give a shit how no, you no, have this conversation. No, 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 I know. I know, I know. Listen, this listen. This is not about the gender point neutrality. Was, no. Or, the, or, you know what I'm saying? Or, no, or, or, it doesn't mean that gender fluid, is like fluidity. neutral or, or fluid. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm simply stating that you have no real way... Of 100% knowing whether someone is like literally a biological woman, like a cis woman or not, unless you like literally look at their chromosomes. No, that's the joke I'm making. Yeah. Correct. That's the joke I'm making. No, but because <laughs> of that, because of that, a lot of people who are transphobic end up literally doing this. So it's that's called, why it's happening. And, and the reason why they inevitably arrive at the conclusion that they genuinely believe that like maybe everyone is trans actually maybe my parents are fucking trans is because they're where so it, goddamn where does it end because... where does it end bro but where the... does it fucking end like what like you know what i'm saying like like okay question is that chat real are those actually humans on the other side you are you real are yeah. you actually really a hu how do i know how yeah. do I know? Well, what you're, what you're you, describing is psychosis. Okay, but 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 this is the world that we, this no, is, because people people delude themselves into psychosis because like they're so invested in a narrative and they like refuse to look at the facts of the matter, refuse to have an open mind, and then they literally end up being <laughs> like a paranoid person who is unironically like imagining. Uh, unironically imagining things that don't exist in the real world, and if they were to just like sit back and maybe like scratch the surface, maybe re-examine the way that they understand an issue and be charitable right. and look for nuance, they would be like, this is insane. So so her, so the evidence that we have been presented is that she looks more like her brother, which which would mean she looked like more like a boy in her youth, and that we don't have any other pictures of her leading up until she became this prominent figure in France. So those are the two yeah. big evidence points. And this video did really well. I mean, Candace's video has got like one point something million views. Of course views it on did, because people are fucking insane. The funniest part about this story is this. What if it was true? What if what oh, if this person was a trans woman? Nothing a fuck. changes. Who gives a nothing single changes? Fuck. But but that said, that's that's neither here nor there. No, well, yeah, but I guess I guess technically you're right. I guess technically, like, I guess technically since since the outcome it does not have a, a a meaning anyways then it should slightly discount the, the it is a good point yeah it, it just like doesn't literally it it doesn't make any sense whatsoever i made fun of this uh the other day then why are someone said then why are you talking about it okay valid point no no no, maybe, no but that's no, the reason chat's that's the reason right. why they do it that's no, the reason maybe, why they do it no maybe chat's right because chat the reason why it's being brought up is because i have a i saw this picture i saw this whole thing chat the reason why it's bringing being brought up is because i have a fear that we are moving to a place where any kind of semblance of sensible conversation is being rooted out of society and we are moving to a place where nothing can be talked about in any kind of beneficial or meaningful way everything is conflated everything is 
you know, like who's the best basketball player of all time? Like that used to be a Michael Jordan versus uh, versus uh, LeBron conversation. What if someone thinks we're, that LeBron not, is a not, robot? Like not, I don't. Where does it fucking end? We're bro? not done with the. Well, you're talking about a post truth. It's ironic. You're like you're talking about <laughs> um, postmodernism, I guess. But like we live in a we live in a post truth world where there's no like objective facts. Who could say? Who's to say what is an objective reality? Like you can't make that assessment. Uh, it no, is no, no. it is okay, unknowable. So if we want to go there. We are we a theoretical a theoretically conversating nation now? Are you elevating people to? This, some sort of Plato like like you know conversation and bias where oh I I don't have a under I, I only exist by what by way of what my five senses tell me so I've never met Michelle Obama in person before so I'm not I'm not willing to use directional evidence to believe the fact Bro, that she's actually a, a, do you not a woman. remember my debate with Andrew Tate where I literally fucking owned him on that when I was talking about the value of like science and empirical evidence over over personal anecdotes. Because he was, I knew that he wasn't a flat earther. So I asked him, do you think the earth is flat? He said, no. And I was like, how do you know it's not flat? It feels flat. Like, and he's like, well, I have personal experiences. And I was like, oh yeah, did you like fly up to space and look down? You have no fucking clue. You know, because that's, it's science. Like science established it for you and you took it for fucking granted. Like these guys that claim that, they they don't care about science or reading or or empirical evidence whatsoever actually do still care about it to a certain degree but the dumber we get the dumber we get the more we are uh and and the more entitled we are the more dunning kruger focused we are the more we believe like well i came up with this idea all on my own <laughs> and i'm a fucking brave little boy i'm a unique little snowflake so if i came up with it it must be true or at the very least, you have to listen to me and take it seriously. That's where a lot of this comes from. Back in the day, I think we could just tell someone, be, we could be like, nah, dog, you're dumb as fuck. Shut the fuck up <laughs> and, and move on. <laughs> now you can't do that because everyone's got a fucking social media account. And everyone's like, oh, no, actually, I came up with a real secret truth that you're just having a hard time. Um, no, 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 no. You're hard. an elitist. You yeah. don't believe it because you support you're an elitist which by the way elon musk also supports it but he's not an elitist bro i can't i can't the it, richest it, it, guy it, on the planet agrees not, with me no 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 he said some of the right things so he's not an elitist he's yeah. for the people the richest Listen, guy on the fucking planet agrees with it, me it, it, honestly honestly bro when i started ta talking against ryan garcia and, and saying like yo bro this dude needs to get help and i and i care about ryan garcia i want to see him get helped the entire internet was convinced that i was a handler that yeah. I was a handle yeah. Hassan, Hassan. What the fuck is going on, bro? Who am I handling? What am I? What am I handling? Am I Logan Paul's? Am I his handler? Is that what it is? Yeah, you and Logan Paul are a part of the elite cabal, dude. That's what it is. That's why. That's why. You got me. You caught that's, me, bro. That's why they, Prime, they tapped me. It, that's why bro. Prime blew up because it is made with baby spinal fluid. No, no, no. Ryan Garcia said cyanide, dude. Oh, he says cyanide. It's gonna get. It's he's dude, that's awesome. Yeah, no, he's, he's listen, so my, my, my final my final note on it, and I thank you for having me today. It was a great conversation. I learned a lot. My my final note on it is that if you are if you are I wish we can get back to a place where if you are willing to take someone else's live life into your hands by making a statement about them, that you understand that the onus of proof is on you, not on the defender. It is the onus of evidence. Yeah. The, the, the burden of proof is not on Michelle Obama to produce pregnancy pictures just because your psychotic ass thinks that she's actually a fucking no, man. No, you're The you're burden of proof right. is on you to provide evidence that clearly states in a in a court of of actual non-psychotic people that what you are saying is is objectively a true statement we are not there right now and until we get back to that place we're a flawed flawed social pe uh, 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 p people and that is that is what i would like to get back to but guess what we're not going back to it yeah. we ain't going fucking back bro you can't prove you can't prove a negative which is like that's why listen <laughs> whenever someone does that shit to you be like you're a pedophile go ahead prove me wrong the best, the best. That's yeah. what I've started. Candace Owens. How yeah. do I? How do we? Know? I, yeah. I hated that I did that on this show because I got. F it doesn't work with your audience because then it turns into this investigative situation. That's not how I fucking meant it. 
That's not how I meant it. I didn't mean no, it like no, that. No, no, I don't just, think anyone thinks you legitimately think Candace Owens is a trans woman. No, like, right. I'm not trying to, like, out her. What I'm saying is, with that logic, why don't I have to pull my dick out right now to show you that I'm a man? Like, yeah. that burden of proof is not on me. Yeah, it's no, not it, on me. No, it, it's on the accuser. <laughs> exactly, which is why you're gonna always be like, well, the way that you're operating, I could just say you're a pedophile, and everyone has to believe me because you, you physically can never, you can never prove that you're not a pedophile. Like they don't understand like this principle, this concept. Right. Like you can't prove that. What are you going to show every single fucking moment of your life, like on camera? That, that you were not out there molesting children? You can't do that. I'm not going to believe it because what if uh, what if the footage is doctored? You know what it's I mean? AI. What That's if it's what I'm AI? I say there's no winning. But listen, thank you for having me on. Yeah. I, I I do thoroughly enjoy your 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 ability to to dive into actual evidentiary, you know, and be committed to these topics and look for proof and look for actual evidence. And you're doing a great job. And this shit is fucking harder than construction. Okay, I'll just I'll just say it's it right not, now, dude. Not. Okay. Okay. So I can't wait, to hear, I can't hear to, wait to hear what you guys talked about with uh, with Jinxie. It's it, I mean, bro, how can it not all be positive? And Hassan's positive. Chat, Hassan, chat. I love you guys. Um, if you're out there right now and you're having yeah, what a, do you want a, a tough time, or you're having a bad day, um, zoom out, zoom out. Look at your life. Look at the quality of your life. Look at the things that you're grateful for. If you have parents, love them. If you if you have a dog, go throw the ball with it. You got a lot of stuff going on. Good in your life right now. Touch and, grass, and, what you're and, and, yeah, and touch fucking grass, dude. And appreciate the fact that real life is out there. It's really happening. Be grateful for the things you have. If you haven't read the Fifth Vital and you want to, um, it's helped a lot of people. It's helped a lot of people in jails and rehabs. It's made a large impact on a lot of people with addiction and mental uh, mental health issues. Go ahead, read the Fifth Vital. It's available on Amazon. It'll be at your house in two days. Um, and uh, and that's he it. wrote the book. And I wrote the book, so yeah. enjoy it. Um, love you See, guys. There's a lot of people saying I was dead ass wrong about Mike. You know, I do my best, dude. And I'm going to go do leg day now. All right. I'm not yeah. doing that. I'm no, going, if you're, I'll see you at Nicki Minaj. All right. All right. I love you, bro. All right. Have a good day. I'm going to pee really quick. Yeah. No, you can't pee. <laughs> this is the first leg. Um, okay. What a lovely young man.